Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com. Founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, We're live right now? Yep. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, guys, welcome. We are back at Table Talk. It's kind of weird because I don't have the intro, so we're just kind of <laughs> rolling from there. Um, today, I got Todd Brock, Chuck Bulgapol, Kenny Patterson, and Joe McCoy. We're going to talk about our time at Westside Barbell. I'll start this off by saying that all these guys were there before me, you know, so I'll just lead in with how I came into Westside, and then we'll just kind of go from there, like what you guys were doing before and all that. Before my I'd compete. I was competing for six, seven, eight years or whatever before coming to Westside. Louie always helped me out in warm up rooms. I'm not going to relive that. I've told the story a million fucking times before. Um, I remember one of the Toledo meets. I think you were, Todd was lifting, Chuck was lifting. I don't think you guys were lifting. And it was a Toledo Hall of Fame meet. Mm. And um, I was competing against Florio, which is kind of a big thing for me yeah. because Florio helped me out too when I was younger. And I beat him, but he beat me because he weighed less which it was kind of fucked up, right? Because you win your class, but yet you lose best lifter because, but Louie then started saying, look, what are you going to do after you graduate? You're going to come to Columbus. And then Louie would call me a few times. I make a trip down. The first time I came down was a little, a little fucked up, right? Because it was when it was the Denver gym by the bingo hall. I told you guys about it earlier. I come in, the guys that were training there weren't the guys that I thought were supposed to be training there. And then, so I made a couple weekends down and then after tearing my pec, I, when I came, when I came into West Side was right when you guys moved the gym from Bingo Hall to Boxer in the Basement, which was <laughs> Sullivan, right? Because I was locked in a sling, so I had to train at uh, M and M gyms, Matt's nice. gym, for the machine shit because I, I couldn't use my arm because right. it was locked down. And then I, the other days, I'd be in there helping you guys with that. So I came in in the Boxer in the gym basement. It's really kind of where it all started. Um, you guys were there beforehand. All you guys were there beforehand. So when did I know Chuck was first? You came in. He was on in Briggs. Louis. Well, he's in Louis' garage, right? Or, no, no, no. He's, so well, Briggs. right afterwards, when they first turned it over. So the second week that it opened up is when I went over. Yeah. The first week they had a bench press meet from the YMCA, and myself and Jimmy Ritchie actually done it. And mm. Louis invited us over from then. So Jimmy was part of it. That that west side at breaks too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's he going come, way he back. come over kind of like with me. Yeah. At the time, all of us started training pretty much together. And then when did you when did you come in? Yeah. When I was on breaks. Yeah. So about the same time. Yeah. Literally like the first week because I was uh, we went to Briggs High School. Chuck graduated before me. Yeah. And I was on my way home from football conditioning, and they were moving stuff into the gym. Yeah. And so I stopped in, and they said, "Come back next week; it'll be open." So. What year was that? Nineteen eighty-eight. Nineteen eighty-eight. No. 87, sorry. 87. So were you coming at Briggs or did you come in at the bingo hall? <laughs> Briggs. I come in at Briggs. I come in 1990, mm -hmm. November of 1990. I just trained like a couple times at Briggs, but it was primarily the bingo hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the bingo hall looked like it was, I can't speak about that, right? Because I trained there like once. That looked like it was weird, right? Because it was commercial. Mm -hmm. yes. And then you had a wall. Yeah, the back room. Right. Because the only home, time I come, home. like the power racks would have like um, caution tape, yes. you know, so people couldn't use them. Yes. You know, so when you guys trained there, was, were you, was the group kind of like it was on Demerst or was it just how did that work? It was still sectioned off like that. Yeah. You know Friday, I mean? Friday nights and Sunday, Sunday mornings, of course, Sunday mornings on Van Horns. But I think during the week, like on Wednesdays and Mondays was still you had groups, but the groups were kind of spotted. Yeah, I would, I would come over after, you know, was in high school, come over with a couple of buddies I brought with me, and it was always, don't go in the back room. Yeah. Don't go in. If Louis here, don't go in the back room. And, of course, you know, I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm a kid from Gehanna. I'm on the west side of Columbus, and, you know, we drove all the way across town thinking it was the best thing ever. I'd been in powerlifting a while, you know, as a teenager. But um, it wasn't until, you know, Louis, well, I don't know if he was still working when it was on Briggs, but he wasn't around much. He wasn't mm -hmm. around often. But, uh, you know, if we were there at 5 or 6 o'clock, he'd come in, I believe, after he got off work. And that's when he started to mentor. And So start. back then it was like you, the, the goal was to be, like, invited to the back room. Oh, yes. Yeah. For sure. Kind for of sure. like the mafia coming into the back yeah. room. Yeah, was, that's the way it was at the first place, too. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It was totally separated. You had to be on the team to be in the back room. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of the way it was before. 
you know, yeah. on, on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. I was tested. Uh, I had a friend of mine that was real good friends with Louie and, and I was, he allowed me to come over there, but on Friday nights, it was more of a, let's see what you got type thing. I had, I had to squat down to a milk crate mm -hmm. constantly every Friday night and we had to go max out and it was just continuous and, and hell, I put like 80 pounds on my squat in like eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, yeah, you can become part of the gym. Now you can start benching with us on Sunday. Yeah. So meat is for breakfast. So that yeah. was kind of my introduction to that. So something had to happen, obviously, where he just got fed up with the commercial gym because when he went to the the boxer in the basement, it, he was just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, when it was yeah. like, this shit's going to mad. I ain't dealing with this anymore. And then that was Sullivan, right? Yeah. So, Sullivan and Whitethorn. Sullivan and Whitethorn. Yeah, that place was. Awesome. Him and Tom Storm were partners. Right. Oh, Louis. were they? And when they split up, then Louis took the weights and stuff and went that way. And Tom went wherever. Don't All right. So that's right. what it was, uh, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, the only thing I remember about that Sullivan place was uh, the reason I keep saying boxer in the basement is because there was yeah. a hole. I mean, there's a fucking hole in the <laughs> in, floor, yeah, right? So Paul you had to, Ford. Yeah, you had to like mm -hmm. watch out. And one of the days I was the first guy in there. And I'm turning the lights on and some fucking dude come out. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. What yeah. the fuck is this? You know, like, who bird. are you? You know, yeah. and like, I'm like, don't like, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. And then yeah. Louie come in and say, no, nah, he lives in the basement. And he was yeah. a boxer. And so it's just. He'd go into the bathroom with that big basin sink yes. there and take a bird bath. Yeah. Louie would be like, that's it. You're done. I'm kicking <laughs> yeah. you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'd always take a shower because we'd be getting there in the morning, like eight in the morning. And it's, here's this dude taking a shower in the bird bath. And then uh, I remember Louie finally kicking him out because he was. But How did, long was we even in that gym? Though? It wasn't I, long. I, I swear long. it was like six months or something. Yeah, it was, it was, like a yeah, it was less yeah. than a year. Yeah, it was definitely less than a year. Then we upgraded to 800 square foot. Yeah, but it was way yeah, better. That, that way place better. was yeah, yeah. a fucking dump. And it was oh, like a pottery. Be. Like There was a business in front of it, right? And we kept breaking their shit. Like they had like um, yeah. clay figurines yeah. or some shit. And every time we deadlift. Shit would come off the shelf and break. Well, you remember the floor? The floor is completely lopsided. Yep. Yeah. We could only put the deadlift yes. on the opposite <laughs> yeah. side. So if there's an angle like this, we had to have the bar on this angle. So one leg was short and one leg was long. Yeah. On right. everything we did. If not, yeah. it would roll right to the other side of the room. Yeah. Steep. And you remember the full floor would boom. Yep. The whole floor would come down. Boom. Mm -hmm. And we think we'd go through the basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of my most vivid memories of that have nothing to do with that deal because we didn't have a monolift. Right. So it, if we were, you know, dynamic work, you're going back to back and I'm squatting with Louie and he's a fucking midget, you know, and Easy. I had to take it out Easy. on his, I know, but I had to take it out <laughs> on his rack height. Right. <laughs> and that sucked, man. And it was my fault because my back was weak, you know, because I would bitch and say, this is bullshit. Like. I got to lift it. You know, you know, you, you're doing a good morning to get it out, yeah. but it was, oh, you're bigger, you're, you're, you're weak, you're back. And he's probably right. You know, and that was the one thing that used to drive me crazy. The other one was I had a, Mike Francis used to come in. You used to like bust his ass, you know, train yeah. lats. I had to squat one time with him back to back. And that was, that was kind of brutal, right? Because the, the guys that were in there, the power lifters like, don't let this fucking bodybuilder beat you. And yeah. this dude couldn't, he just, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Monster. Like 15 sets in yes. of this, and I'm like, I, you, you can't help looking at him. My going, lower back is trashed. Yeah. I'm just like, he just, just grew. This guy's growing in yeah. front of us. You know, yeah. it's like the whole he was a monster. huge. Yeah. I just remember Louie told him, you want to get big? You got to wear a weight vest. Remember? <laughs> yeah. he, he said, whenever you're at home, have a 25 pound. And then he had put that weight vest he had that would make mm -hmm. him lean over. And here you got that Mike Francois with a 20 monsters yeah. dude with 25 pound plate. It wasn't walking even around. a weight like, vest, man. It was like a yeah. denim yes. shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. with a was, pocket yes. that you put a 25 pound like a, plate in. It was a backpack on yeah. reverse. He, yeah. Exactly. He was like, it's what you need. I'm like, yeah. that guy's 240 pound of muscle. I mean, I don't, was, I'd never forget that. How did, the, how did the Van Horn thing come about? Like, why was that? Space. Yeah. I, I remember it was more about space because on Sunday mornings, because that was only 800 square feet and you had basically two benches, if I remember. Right. Yeah. But that was happening before going to that gym, right? No, we started mm -hmm. going to Van Horns when we moved on to Demerest into yeah, the 800 right. square foot. I think yeah. we didn't go out there I before. Remember. We had too many people in the back, so some had to be out front. Louis went yeah, to you're right, together. you're right. So, and we had three benches that went at Van Horns. Right. Yeah. Then the... the B team, yeah, you know, not disrespectful, but they, you know, no, they were training at the other ones. At the other yeah. yeah. Now when I, when I came in, I was two seventy, just a giant fucking zit, you uh, know, with, with, yeah. with, with, yeah. with a mullet, yeah, you know, yeah. and um, <laughs> I, I, it was it was weird for me because I liked the ad, the atmosphere, right? Because it's what I was looking for, and everybody was stronger than me, which is what I was looking for. 
And um, that's why I was so confused when I came in that one time and it was like, you know, the, <laughs> like you said, the B crew, or that wasn't even the B crew. It was like a, it was like yeah. a D crew. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck, you know? And um, just the, the mindset, you know, was you're expected, you know, to, to do more, yeah. you know, which was awesome to be around. It was also humbling, you know, because I was big fish and, you know, little pond. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're like, oh, fuck, mm -hmm. I'm not even on the this is the big bench. I'm like on the middle bench. Yeah. And Louie was also like, man, you can't go out there until you bench 500. I'm like, I already have. You it didn't do count. It I didn't do it here. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't do this until you get an elite total. Like, I got three of them, but you didn't do it here. You know, you couldn't get on the stupid list, which I, you know, I say stupid now, but I mean, it was a big ass thing until you did it when you were there, yep. you know, which was a driving type of force with that as well. Um, with the boxer and the, it's, box on the basement right so it's six months a year then it was going over to what i know is yep. that's what i see as west side yep. right and black glass was, yeah paint it black or whatever yeah. you want to call it and that was 10 years maybe you know it's i i mean it's if i if i'm trying to think of the people that moved into there that were still there when it went to industrial drive it's probably chalk myself amy and kenny maybe you know, he might have been out a little before that. Yeah, I never trained yeah, anyone on the yeah. industrial yeah. drive. Yeah. I think I, I, no, I think I was going just before that. Right before. Right you talking right about right the big storage unit place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Val um, Valley View. Yeah. I, yeah. When I came back the second time, I trained there for, I don't know, two years or something. Then. Yeah. So that's when the west side I remember is that dimmer yeah. location, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The that's where all the stories and shit are sure. where I think a lot of there's a lot of funny ass stories that are out there and there's a lot of stories that I think are a little bit misrepresented you know <laughs> where you know there were there were a handful of thugs but not everybody and there was a thug you know for to me most of the people in there were like working come in train and then go back to work you know, for sure it, yep. it, I mean your ass wouldn't even you you would come in do one exercise and just vanish mm -hmm. be like the fuck where'd Joe go yeah. you know like every max effort bench day it seemed like you know he bash a floor press pr by 30 pounds yeah. and then man where'd he go had to go I had to go i didn't I, have I that lifestyle had to, had, to, had to go to work yeah that's you know? right and um loss prevention and shot and scene. there you go baby <laughs> <laughs> shock and scene <laughs> had to do it where through that time there are a lot of things that louis kind of brought in where actually they started to come in during, you know, I made a list of things, an article I wrote years ago, of the things that I saw come into and out of West. I just, stupid shit. Like, the, when I first came in, in that first gym, the max effort rotation was uh, pin presses, mm -hmm. overhead pin presses, close grip inclines. I don't even think we're floor pressing yet. No, I think that came about with Jesse Kellum. Yeah. 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 But it, it, was a, it was a small, it was like only three different things. Yep. You know, like Wednesday would either be a, fucking pin press which yeah you know, i don't think anybody really liked the pin press that much I well kenny did. Did. Yeah, kenny did it's a two inch press for kenny but 12 inches for everybody else so. <laughs> yeah and then that was it you know then the boards don't came. hate on me yeah <laughs> and then the boards came and floors yeah. and stuff like that weight releasers weight release. yeah well try to be a weight releaser whatever you can consider it well van horn made whatever that contraption was yep. the weight releasers Made everything for Louis yep. back yeah. then. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you guys saw that you remember coming in, oh. you know, at any point in time? Obviously, chains and bands were. Yeah. Oh, usually. big time. Yeah. yeah. Board yeah. press, floor press. I mean, I guess those all revolve around the bench. I mean, was there any other, like, squat exercise? I mean. Well, fucking Chuck would come up with all kinds of shit that would just be yeah. hard. Well, that was on the fly, though, too. Like. There's different stages yeah. or different yeah. times, you know yeah. what I mean? Back when we, when we, all of us, we never changed from Louis' little program pretty much. Right. Mm -hmm. With the exception of saying that you're going to do 70% and everybody works up and end up yeah. taking a weight about yeah. every week, you know, challenging one another. Right. And you would spend like an hour making a movement up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, set, setting the damn thing up. I try. You know, where it was uh, most of the same Mondays were good. I mean, this was true with you bef before, right? It's, where it, was it good morning? Was it the same shit before I got there? So like 70% of every Monday was some kind of fucking good morning. And then a yeah. squat and a deadlift. Yeah, that was maximum effort every yes. Monday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it ended up being two maximum efforts every week 
because squats turned into a maximum effort. Yeah, it turned into And then two days later, then we're then we're back into Pulling it again. Yeah. So you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And bets are made and everything else at that point. You know, teams are involved and everything else. You know, so it, you know, it got, it yeah. got pretty wild there. No, no, I, I I go back and forth with that because I don't know if it helped or hurt, right? Because we we didn't really have a lot of weight on our back for the actual squat. Right. That was one of the things that was different for me because I came from the linear program where you're putting suits and wraps and all yeah. this kind of shit on. And then I come into West Side and it's like you're not putting anything on except briefs. Yeah, right. Until the day that, of the meet. Well, mm-hmm. even the briefs, it was, I mean, for a long time, it was no briefs. Then you would use the briefs a little bit before the meet. You know, venture, not until you go to the meet. Mm-hmm. You know, squat suit, wraps, not and never fucking right. Nothing was not until yeah. the meet. Yep. And I, it fucked me all up. Like the first mm-hmm. year year and a half, two years, I almost got thrown out because, you know, I would come in the afternoon with Waddle and Jerry because of work, but also to kind of avoid thi- that, right. you know, it's like, I, I can't go to a meet and not have fucking gear on. You know, I think everybody did that. Though. Yeah. I know I did it several times, you know what I mean? Because I had to get used to the gear. I knew it, it, it changes form. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 90% of your form has changed when you put gear on. Mm-hmm. It, and there towards the end, well, towards the end of my career is when those canvas suits came into play and stuff. I mean, yeah. trying to figure that out. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, that's a whole different. Yeah, yeah I actually, I don't claim to be a big squatter, but when my squat went up, when I squatted 881, that's when I started training up in Cleveland mm-hmm. because we would do that. Like we, it was kind of the same thought process, but it was adding equipment as the weights went up. So you got accustomed to the equipment mm-hmm. and you weren't like in La La Land trying to figure out how to sit back against a canvas suit or whatever. Just perfecting yeah. your technique. Yeah. yeah. Cause it we, is totally different. Yeah. We yeah. never did. It was always no. Right. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, we worked up though, cause we get in these pissing contests like Chuck's talking about where, you know, it feels good on a Friday. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to feel good. Oh yeah. You know, then after your eight sets, you like throw a quarter on and you but can't remember this. We never ever did free squats. Never. I know that. It was only box. Yeah, till right. You went to a meet and then all of a sudden you're just thrown in there. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's where things started to change. I had to get things changed at that point. Sure. Mm-hmm. And Kenny, he, he took off before I did and they were making change over on the other. But once we got to those other suits, I had to make change because yeah. the whole structure of the squat Everything. completely changed yep. at that point. Yes. More yeah. upright. Yeah, mm-hmm. more upright. Yeah. You know, that was, that was um, <laughs> something that like I said, it fucked me up where it's, you know, there was one meet. It was after the, I think it might've been the first meet that I did after getting there and it didn't go well. Right. So I blowed it. It's the one I made meet. I had to lose like 10 pounds. And for me, I'm, I don't cut weight. Right? A, so a, whole like, 10? a whole 10 pounds. Right? <laughs> I mean, to me, it was like a big fucking deal. Right. I'm like all nervous and shit. Cause I always had to gain weight into my class. Right. Chuck and, loses and you're, 38 you're, pounds. Yeah. You're busting. My, like, everybody's making fun of me. Cause I'm like freaking out about fucking 10 pounds. And then I make it and gain like 32 pounds. In was that Chicago? Work. You couldn't yeah, get back yeah. in your suit. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And so my squat was a mess. Cause it, but at the same time, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? You don't put your gear on. So I didn't know my suit wasn't going to fit. Then my bench shirt didn't fit at all. I mean, he did so win that contest that weekend, though. I didn't gain in the most weight. Well, that I did, but <laughs> I pulled out. I, I pulled out of the bench. In right? Twenty four yeah. hours, I gained the most yeah. weight. Twenty four hours. I pulled out. I pulled out of the bench because I couldn't get the shirt on. I, I learned a real valuable lesson. You don't pull out of meets if you're a West Side Bar. Because right. at dinner that night, you're sitting at a fucking table making these choking, <laughs> and I'm matter and fuck, man. I'm like, and it, just, it didn't stop. It was a whole fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and so that never happened again after that. You know, do but, it all. Joe yeah. must not have been. I know. I, 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 I learned, man. I learned oh, after yeah. that. You dropped. He the wouldn't let up. Yeah, because Joe, Joe wouldn't let anyone go. That was. <laughs> no, I mean it was no. He was <laughs> brutal. He all. Oh, that was the best. It was good and bad. He pissed me off one time because he took a half, <laughs> <laughs> a half inch board, you know, on the squat, which is looking back, it's not. It's not even a half it's inch, fr- seven yeah, sixteenths. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a half inch. Little. And it's been compressed for 14 <laughs> years because the yeah, boards were yeah, all old and yeah. frayed. He'd come back and pull that, pull that thing out. You know, <laughs> Collapsed. You, you thought I would got buried, no. you know, from that. But and then he, so fast, he'd go bumping away, running away. You know, after that, the, um, that was one of the, that, that was one, you know, but his mouth, man. Yeah. Holy fuck. And if it was a high box squat day mm-hmm. with a man array. Mm-hmm. You're, we're all oh, yeah. fucked. Yeah. We're all yeah. fucked. Yeah, Joe ruled that one. The man array. Put that I way forgot. up on your neck. Yeah, I forgot about that, too. Yep. Yeah. How can you not be... <laughs> he's like doing like 860, yeah. 900. Well, like, that's how he squatted, though. He was like was, perfectly straight that up. That was down. always easy. The funny thing is that back then, a high box, like a high box for us was what, 18? 
17. It's like 17, two inches above 17. parallel. Yeah. Like 17, 18 inches, 17. where nowadays that's like a normal box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is. If you measure it, you know, what's a normal box that most people are using? Yeah. You know, that was high. The regular box, the one that you pulled out, I went to 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. And it was like, nah, you don't do that shit. You go 14, you know, or 12. Yes. You know I remember that. we used to go down to them low ones, those tens and something ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. That was, and we swatted real wide. Right. So, yeah. And Which for flexible. me was it was called parallel. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. With um, you can you had you had a worlds before, right? Worlds was, be before I come to Westside. Yeah. So yeah, that was in 1990. I was getting ready for. I'd already won nationals as a teenager, 17 years old, and I qualified for the worlds in um, Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I go over there. And I meet Doug Heath, mm -hmm. and of course the character he is. Oh yeah, this is where you need to be. Ah, so I met um, Doris mm -hmm. and Mariah and, and that whole crew, you know. And so that's what kind of led me um, over to West Side. Prior to that, I had uh, a couple funny stories. So first time I ever met Kenny, we were. 13 or 14, we're little punk kids. I don't know, we're 148, 132? 148. 148. And uh, I think we both benched like 220, something like that. So I had met him. And then, um, he, I think, were you at Westside then? Yeah. Okay, so he's at Westside, and I think he told me a little story or whatever, but I just go back to Gehanna. My uncle was writing all my training or whatever, programming. And then um, when we're 17, we meet back up. Here comes walking through the door. Remember Brian Bosworth with that big mohawk? No. Mm -hmm. Long hair, and it was all colored, and it had the layers in it. I mean, this this guy. Oh, had, he had the colored long shit like oh, that? Oh, yes. yeah. No, oh, his hair was down to here. I mean, he was, now, you know what I mean? Let's be honest about who did my hair, though. <laughs> yeah. Chuck's wife did my hair. Oh, my gosh. It was the worst. Yeah. So then we get to the competition. Best stylist in Columbus. So the, the best part is we get to the, the, the contest. I don't know, 475, or we were 165 or something like that. And he gets a high squat and he beats me. I mm -hmm. mean, I still have it on video. I mean, completely. watches it daily too. I mean, yeah. completely. And then, and then, um, the the bench shirt he wore was one of the first Enzers. With and it was sparkles. Doris's with sparkles. Oh, yeah. 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 That was that denim material. It was like, I was mean, that Enzer or France? No, it's France. France. I'm sorry, France. 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 Yeah. France. Yeah. I meant France. Yeah, it had sparkles. It was Doris's uh, bench shirt he was nice. wearing. So then, um, I can't imagine you that small. I was huge. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious. What did you bench like three? Yeah, like 30, 15, something, something three, like yeah. that. Yep. So then the first day at Westside, so I get my boys and we come from Gehanna, right? And here comes walking through the front door. Here's, here's Kenny P. He's got the long hair. He's got an L.A. Raiders <laughs> um, leather coat. <laughs> starter coat. Starter jacket. Oh, no. Two pagers on both sides. Bang, bang. And then, you know, we're talking to him. I had to be able to get contact. Yes, yes. He can't forget the Jordans, though. Oh, he had Jordans, oh, 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 he's walking curve in like, I mean, he literally, feelings. he might. No, I didn't have the curve feeling. Hold on. He yeah. might own Columbus. Hold on. I'm getting to the car. I'm getting to the car. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're talking to him. I mean, he's the baddest guy. I'm this let's, get, let's get this hold shit on. out of the way early. So, I'm, I'm, I'm so this, we can talk about something. Hold else. on. I'm this little kid from Hannah, right? And I mean, this guy, like, this guy's somebody. He comes in. I mean, he's walking. He's doing the part. We work out or where we go outside. He pulls up in what year was that a condo court? Uh, 86. <laughs> 86. It was like lowered and on the bumper, it said the one and only Kenny P. Uh, See, that my, was my I first remember, experience. I remember the band. The That's band. All I oh, the yeah, yeah. Astro out, band. Yeah, because I used to go out to Van Horns and Jew, uh, Louis, um Trooper. Yes, right. Oh, that was yeah. dangerous. Like twice. I'm like, I'm not doing this. You got again. in it a second time? No, uh, no, yeah. I mean, because it. He come off that off ramp, fucking yep. tires on three coming. wheels. I'm like, I ain't doing sure. that, you know. So then it was like in the back of your van, which was just like a pimp van or some shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was. Speakers. Remember how yeah. big those speakers were? Oh my oh, god, yeah. the whole wall. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It all, yeah, it only had two captain's chairs in it. Then it had a wall with four fifteens in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just two people were comfortable. <laughs> yeah. The third one was screwed, but yeah. I got a good story about Louie in the, in the car situation because he had that trooper, right? Piece mm -hmm. of crap. It had all that butcher's hair. It was about six oh, inches yes. deep. And uh, you get in there mm -hmm. and smack it and put your all, uh, hair all over you or whatever. So I wanted to go to this, uh, I don't know what meet it was. It was in Peoria. Peoria um, Illinois. Illinois. It was in Peoria. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Yeah, car won't make it, but I'll, I'll go. And I'm like, well. Let me ask my mom if we can borrow our car. <laughs> <laughs> so I go home, you know, I'm like, hey, mom, this guy, Louie, my parents were the best. I mean, they just let mm -hmm. me, if they only knew, right? But they just let me hang out on the West Side with these guys. You know, I don't know how old Louie was, how old he had to be then. 
1991, 40, 40 Okay, he's 45 years old, this bald headed guy, big crazy. Hey, mom, can we borrow your car to go to go to you know Illinois? And, and my mom's like, well, yeah. I'll never forget. We pull up, and uh, Louis like, I'm driving, I'm driving. You know, it was a six speed Beretta. And I'm telling you what, I'm here. I am driving across Indiana, Illinois. He's going 100 miles an hour. I'm me and Mark Borders in the front seat. I'm in the back seat. I mean, we're flying. I'm just like, you know, now that you look back on it, you know. I'm driving my mom's car. Yeah. And Louie's driving. It was, that was a... That was uh, you know, there's a lot of shit you look back on it and you're like, that was, it, it's more fucked up than you yes, think yes. it is. Like at the time, it was just a normal yes, thing. Yes, yes. You know, like his, the the trooper <laughs> turning uh-huh. the wheels and all the other kind of shit like that. And the dog, one time he, I forget what it was, but he convinced me that it was, I need, well, I probably did, needed conditioning, right? And the conditioning was walking his dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> which which was going to this park right and you you but you didn't walk the dog, dog walked the you. dog it walked it was an yeah. eccentric contraction of just not trying to get fucking pulled on your yeah. face that dog was out of control no oh, no and this was my training it's like you need to do 10 trips or whatever the fuck it was and the whole time i'm like is this actually like for me to get stronger or to see if I'm going to do it or not, or just to walk his freaking dog. Walk his dog. His dog. <laughs> he but, paid people to do that. Yeah. Was that Butcher? But he didn't yeah, pay me to do it. <laughs> yeah. That Wait, Butcher was a big dog. Was well, that the one? Because he had one that was in his backyard that never came in the house. Was that Butcher? No, Butcher no. was in the house. Yeah, Butcher was in the house because I was, was Nitro. Nitro didn't come in. Very yeah, there was long. one when I go over there. He's like just crazy yeah don't and go stare just well, like that mic right in your face the whole well, time you're we, watching. That was yeah we used pleasure. to go we used to go there and watch the pro fights yes. all the time mm-hmm. and that dog you you would yeah. have to get escorted from yes. the front door to the sofa because you couldn't walk through the house by yourself and then you sit there and you'd be watching the tv and the dog would be right here <laughs> so that was nitro that was no, in that the was house that was, that was, that was bush that was i remember yeah. that yeah and he was probably solid what 110 he was big 110 120 pounds he was solid big. and you didn't you didn't even dare turn and look at him no 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 yeah well, that dog scared the shit out oh, of me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, because yeah. you come to the door, <laughs> and you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to come. And, ah, it's fine. It's, it's and fine. like you said, it's just you're sitting there on the couch, and it's like right. Yeah, slobber on your shoulder and shit. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't, it's do okay. you can't do anything. It's no. all right. It's good. It's yeah. Good. <laughs> I had to go to the bathroom. You're not daring getting up. You're nope, just like, I'm all right. That's what, I mean, that's what was fucking me up, because you got that, right? And he's like, there's the other one. You know, it's like, oh, the other one's work. You know, don't the other one's crazy. And I'm thinking, like, yeah. what's <laughs> Like, what's this one? This one's about to take a bite out of my bite. face. <laughs> Jackie would bite. Yeah. yeah. But he was yeah. a pit bull. Yeah, but I think, didn't Nitro pass away, like, early? Yeah. Yeah. Cause well, that's, isn't, he, isn't that what's on the shirt? It's on the shirt, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I vaguely remember. So that had to be when I was, like, real young. Butcher's the one that's on the videos. Yes. All right, well, then this had to be a different Butcher. dog because that Nitro would have had to pass before I got there. Right. Yeah, so Butcher. this was some was other. Butcher. Was that was Butcher, Butcher in the yeah. back. Big white dog. Yeah, because it was crazy because I went over, like, he'd have the fights, right? And yep. I'd go over once or twice. And I'm like, I'm not doing this because you fucking dog slobber and shit all over, <laughs> yeah. you know? Don't wear black. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't yeah. wear black. So I learned real quick, you know, you're not going to go over there, you know, for fights. And there was, you had a 4th of July party or something one time. I went to one and I'm like, I learned real quick. I'm not going to one of Chuck's parties either, you know, because it's, <laughs> I don't drink. Oh, you know, so all of a sudden there's like 12 jello shots and, you know, it's just, it's insane. And then you're like beating the fuck out of a dummy, you know, that whatever that thing was, it was a, the hell was was his name? The hell was that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't don't remember. I don't remember that one either. Oh, no, no, no. It was, it was the the jello shots I distinctly remember. That was in every, that was in every gathering. Yeah. 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 Because it's, you couldn't not do it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's Chuck's not going to let you not do yeah, it. It's like yeah, tricep yeah. extensions when he says he owes you you owe him ten. <laughs> yeah, you know it's, <laughs> you owe him ten. Yeah, yeah. Then you're wondering like, yeah. is, is he fucking taking the Jello shots or is it just Jello? Yeah, you know because we're yeah. just pounding it down. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> That's that. The whole oh, owing me, yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, yeah. There, there's a question: Was were yours the actual Jello shots or just Jello? No, it was, it was the same <laughs> as everybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to push things, so I just keep it going, keep it going. Someone's going to go out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. figure it ain't going to be me. It's the way I figure. So. Yeah, those were good parties at your house when you had the pool sunk down in the. Yeah. I remember above. Yeah, well, it was, a, yeah. It was like a four-foot pool, but two-foot was in the water, so mm-hmm. you could actually dive over the rail. Mm-hmm. Another meet that I remember, 
the, the crazy stories are the ones that are, you remember that most, right? Is I don't know how Chuck and I ended up walking in the meet at the same time, but as soon as we walked in, you got called on the platform. It was fucked up because you were like 220 or whatever it was. They switched the order. Like they took oh. the, 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 the heavier yeah. class, you know how they split a day in half yeah. and they put it first, you know, so we're walking in and he gets called, you know, like Chuck Vogelpool with whatever the opener is. And it's like, uh, you remember that? Oh yeah. It's like, what the fuck is this? And, um, I, it might've been Romulus, you know, Canton, you know, the, mm -hmm. how those meets rotated through or whatever it was, um, that was a that was a regular meet too. Yeah, the Canton Open. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was there when I came in. There wasn't that rotation yet, you know. Of it, it was trying to start like junior nationals, then nationals, then nationals, and worlds or whatever it was going to be. It was you had to qualify. I think you had to qualify for nationals, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every year. So it was that to qualify, and then. You know, and the place top two for the yeah. world. And then for you guys, you know, it's the world, and I sucked, so I didn't go to the world. So I was just back to the nationals again. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, kind of through there, where I think over time you didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah, I don't know if you did or not. Like For the worlds? Well, no, you always had to qualify right. for the worlds, right. yeah. Oh, you know what it was? It's when um, the, the, the IPA, senior, the, the, the IPA. Senior nationals? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was national, senior nationals, and then the world championships. Yeah. Yeah. But then later on, the reason why you didn't, that I don't think you had to qualify is because we had that IPA. Yeah. Oh, like a split. Mm -hmm. Split Separated. in the gym, which was fucked up, right? Yeah. That was yeah. a weird, yeah. that was a weird time, yeah. you know, where you, you guys fell on the APF, you know, and yeah. I went with the IPA, which was a weird one because at the time, you know, I'm close to Lou, right? And it's, I'm not there that long. But my whole life, all I ever wanted to do was to win the APF Nationals and didn't have the balls to be able to say, look, I'm going to go and do the APF, you know? So that was a weird time, right? We, At that point, me, Kenny, and I think Todd, we was like, no, we're doing it. We're not getting yeah. run out. I was like, right. I'm not letting someone else think that they're running me right. out. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not running for nobody. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we went and he was mad about it. Yeah. You no, know, he was mad as hell yeah. about it, mm -hmm. you know, so I wanted to, I, I was trying to stay out of that drama, you know, but at the same time, it actually kind of worked out, right? Because it's, <clears throat> there's always been like the A and B, whatever, however you want to frame it. But what that ended up with is the, the IPA guys could now help, you know, the APF guys and vice versa. So then when you went to a meet, you didn't have to worry about, I don't want to throw names out, but, you know, people helping you that were either trying to get you too fired up or just getting in your way, right. more obnoxious, mm -hmm. you know, than they were helpful. Right. You know, and so in, in, in that regard, it kind of helped, you know, because then, you know, if you guys are helping me. I remember one first time I benched 585, you know, you guys were helping me and it was one of those meets and I'm an idiot, you know, so I was the guy that would like smash my head on the bar and fucking bleed all over the place and not think through a lift. Mm -hmm. And it was I think it was Joe that said, just do, just settle your, settle the fuck down because I'm an idiot, you know, and just do exactly what we tell you to do exactly. And then you're on each side and just like, take it out, hold it. You know, and I got up like, Oh shit. Like what just happened here? <laughs> like this shit works. If you can actually think through the lift instead of just like muscle fucking it up, you know, from that where I don't know if that would have happened. Yeah. You know, you see what I'm saying? Because now you got people helping you that have actually been there instead of this just get fired up bullshit. You know, it's just especially that's what I did for years. Yeah, I know. You know, when, when, that was the big thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean for, for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I, the meets I had to help you in, that was the big thing is it's not about getting you fired up. It's like, how the fuck do we keep people away? Yeah. Right. That are just going to yeah. piss you off and not let you go absolutely berserk right. you know which internally berserk you know but there's there's a line yeah. you know and i don't think you know that unless you've been there you know and um smack your head on a bar you i mean you guys were patient you were different no, i was always super calm yeah that's how I was. yeah i was about to, until about 30 seconds before yeah like i had my own internal stuff that i did like right before you got to the platform but i couldn't like i, I felt like i would waste energy if I did, maybe I didn't have enough energy to make through the whole thing like at, at his level. I don't know. I always felt like I had to just be fucking berserk. 
Yeah, it didn't you work know, for me. <laughs> you know, so I end up fucking being zippy. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. You know, <laughs> shaking and doing all this other shit, and there's a balance mm -hmm. you know, that you got to kind of find. Yeah, with I that. actually had to be, like, I would, like, tell jokes and stuff between. Yeah, that's like, I had to, yeah, I had to, like, calm my, like, not calm myself down, but, like, focus on something you else. You just separate. And, yeah. And then until you had to step in that zone, then you're. Yeah, and I think that that zone, so to speak, came like like in the squat when you started wrapping your knees, right? Like that was the whole when you started changing your mindset. And then whenever you got to the chalk bowl on the walk to the, the platform is when you could actually kind of focus. You got to understand for people like myself, we're seeing... You was all hyped probably in the shower that morning. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 the best meet I ever had, I think Louie or I don't know how it happened, but him and Bob Youngs took it upon themselves to make sure I was never with myself. Oh. It, ever yeah because i would i just want to fucking kill things mm -hmm. you know and it just builds and builds and builds then by the time you get there you fucking bomb that's, out like that, that didn't be, work <laughs> that should be your next article like me myself and zippy yeah you know i always I, that's my training partners yeah. myself my pretend friend and my imaginary friend yeah. that's mm -hmm. you know, the best fucking training partners you ever have <laughs> he has interest yeah that was the way i was yeah i'd have to turn myself away from my competitors because if I looked at them, I'd be so mad and so focused that I would just completely go out of my mind. So mm -hmm. I'd have to look away from them, not even look at them. And, and yeah. Because if not, then all I'm thinking about is just fighting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or completely something fucking I shouldn't be thinking about. So. <laughs> Where I saw that the most was in, um, oh man, which one was that? It was, it was one of the WPOs, but it wasn't in Columbus. It was in an expo hall like Atlanta or some shit like that. And it was, it was, it was part of a, it was actually part of the expo, you know? So where you guys were living in New Orleans. Yeah. Where oh, you got, yeah. yeah, yeah where yeah. you guys were lifting was like part, like a trade show, Yeah, you know? And so there was a small area, you know, and I'm helping Chuck, right? Mm -hmm. The warm up room was a small area, like small, way smaller than normal. It's where, um, Ano squatted 10, 50 or... It was at uh, Hard Rock, wasn't it? Oh, that, that, was was that was the first one. That was the first one. This was the after first that. WPO. That was after okay. that. Okay. But it was so fucking congested. It had to be Atlanta or New Orleans because yes. I think they were in both cities like two years in a row. Yeah. And, yep. and, but with with him, it's everybody was so close. You know, and you, you what you just said is 100% true. You had to like help him to like not see these people <laughs> you know and it's not like you didn't dislike them it's just the state that you're in to yeah. compete with them and the chicken hawk you know it just <laughs> kept you know oh it was it was it was that was a job in itself yeah. just keeping that you know going because chicken hawk well i mean him and i mean some well there were there was, I, don't remember. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that thought that chuck had to get more fired up and i'm like just <laughs> Yeah. He, he Chicken Hawk would be one of those on. guys Chicken. that would, he would, hey, you need to sit down. You need yeah. to do this. Huh? I'm like, you don't need to tell me anything. Yeah. Man. You know what I mean? I'm wound right yeah. now. Uh, Get away, I bro. I haven't heard Chicken Hawk in 20 years. Yeah. That's the funniest thing. If they they tell he, me to tell, hey, tell Chuck to sit down. I'm like, nope, you're on your own. Nope, nope. Thank you doing it. No, I mean, it's the easiest person to help. He's you know, good. You just keep He's him good. away from yeah. other people. Keep people the fuck away from him. Yep. And he'll tell you what to do when you need it. It's pretty simple. I just stand right there with his, his knee wraps when yeah. he's ready for him here. But you <laughs> see, you doing. know, I'd see like two or three people start coming over. And it's like, oh, uh -oh. fuck that. Nope. You got to, you know, <laughs> like, go like, this. like just not, stay the fuck away. But with, with you telling jokes and shit like that, you know, we're looking at that like he ain't fucking serious about anything. You know, when you're the guy that hits the head against the bar, like myself, I'm like, man, what the fuck? You know, he don't even give a fuck. And then you'll break records. I mean, well, maybe, maybe I need to change what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't do the whole, <laughs> that energy thing. That just isn't me. Yeah. Everyone's their own person. Yeah. Yeah, whatever works for you, for sure. He was definitely more entertaining to watch him. Oh, that? definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most oh, yeah. definitely. Oh, yeah. Walking up to the platform. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's there was nothing are, better. Good times. Especially being from Columbus. There's nothing better, especially at the end when you're heavier and bigger weights, but at the WPO at the Arnold, you know, when you would come out for you know, the squats, especially, and the whole no, place no. would stand up and it would just start like echo. That was that was cool as shit for me. Did mm -hmm. you notice that? Oh, I did. I mean, did, did you notice that? I don't think you even noticed that. Did you? I'm. I don't know. I being honest, I don't know. You know, what I mean, I afterwards I knew it because everybody would come up, but yeah. during, you know, you're just so you wound up. A it's bit. like you know, you just. I don't even know what's going on at that point. Yeah, I don't. Then afterwards, you know, years and years after, 
when I still started breaking records when I was in my late 40s and stuff like that, then I would start to slow everything down and focus. And I was, because I wasn't as strong at that point, you know, I started losing strength, but I started being more technical and slow my body down a little bit, and then I was able to keep on going. If only you could have done that 20 years earlier. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's... Then the other was working for me, that's so true. why that's change val- it yeah, then, valid. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, you were, you were probably the, no, it's, you know, you were one of the first, you know, just to start training some of the lifts somewhere else, yeah. right? And your deadlift, you know, went through the it went well, like 100 pounds for I mean, me it, yeah. it went up a lot right yeah. and it My was actually you did it first right i, I did it first he yeah. did it first yeah, he did it actually in the gym yes i did it again how'd you pull that off with his little grip deals there. i said we're we're done because the, no one ever deadlifted or that yeah that phase of you, you don't have to, to deadlift, deadlift to deadlift. deadlift and i'm like you got it didn't it work for i know but how'd you pull that off without just did it same way he left after one exercise yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like he was incognito no one saw him well, yeah. Louis always been that way. I mean, the the guys who are leading, he'll let them do it a little bit more than yep. the others. Yeah. But also, so, you know, what I mean, Joe was our best ninety eight at that time. So Joe was doing it a little bit. He'd leave him alone yes. a little bit, but no one else could do that with him because mm-hmm. no. he'd pull every every person for me. Every time I had a training yep. partner, he pull them to the side. You can't tra- you can't work out with Chuck. I have mm-hmm. to give me a new one. I go get another guy and bring him <laughs> in. Next thing you know, he's gone. And I, my own cousins and everything yeah. else I bring in to work out. And next thing you know, they're over here not allowed to train with me. Mm-hmm. For years that yeah. happened. You I know remember? I tried for a while and end up in the corner in a fetal position. Yeah. It's like you can't you can't train with Chuck like that. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, well I mean, it was I mean it was different. You know it was. <laughs> The accessories were a lot higher volume. He, I remember when he the broke his neck. But it wasn't just that. It was also that you pushing the other stuff. But. Well, when he broke his neck, we're still out there at Boxer's Gym, bird bath there. And he comes in and, you know, because of his neck was broke, his, this was after the, one of the July parties where him and Demo were wrestling. Popped, popped his neck. And anyway, he comes in afterward, just got all that shit taken off. I think he was in that little halo. Wow. And he comes in and his arms are all skinny. And I just got done benching. It was a Wednesday. And uh, he's like, come on, train with me here. So we were doing dumbbells. I think he starts out with like 30s. And that was that was fairly good because he was pretty beat up. And we work up to like 40s. And I'm like, I'm done. He goes, no, just keep going. You owe me so many. And like we just, just pounded out the 40s, 40s, 40s. It was like 10 or 12 sets. I'm like, Chuck. He goes, you got more to do? I'm like, you won. Yeah, you yeah. tapped out. Well, here's the I'm thing, too. I've already trained an hour and a half. He can't count for shit no, either. You know, so you no, owe him he, six, and after you do three, and you hear two. Yeah. <laughs> he can count with And then you do rest. three more, and you hear three. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know, and it was a constant type of thing. Never had a problem finding followers, though, did you? you just- Get rid of well, he did. Out. I mean, he just made a good. He had he'd bring people in. I'd have to yeah, always bring a new bring one in. <laughs> he'd bring a new one in. Then after a while, because Louis would say, you know, don't do what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, some of what he's doing is good. Yeah, yep. you know, it's working. You know, there's there's something to doing 35 sets. Well, maybe not 35. There's something to doing a lot of sets of lats before training. Yep. You know, you did every bar. I think it was. I think it's how you did it. You did every bar for two sets of. 12. Well, I think I, when talking later to, to Louie, I think he, he said that was kind of like your GPP. You'd go into work afterwards and you'd do like 10 sets of 10 or 12 sets of pull downs, you know, how detrimental are pull downs, but it's still something that you're energizing your body with, you know, kind of mm-hmm. more of a GPP type work. So. There one time he come in and you tore your tricep doing shit with at work, you know, and you can barely fucking walk and you go over to the lats and Louie and I are sitting down in the belt squat machine. And you, you ain't asking nobody anything. You can't even bend over, you know, to get the stupid attachment. So you, I'm, we're watching him hobble. It's not even a hobble. It's like just scooch back and like find a way to go down on one knee and grab the, and then use the fucking machine to like change the attachment. And then I looked at Louie and I said, uh, you know, sh- should we like go, go help him? It's like, you want to help him? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, so we just sat there and laughed for 15 fucking minutes, mm-hmm. you know, because it was too great. It, it, it just back down again and just watching it was just it, chalk. You know, yeah. it's just classic fucking chalk stuff. Well, where y- you know where that come from. It come because everybody else in the gym was taken off for anything. They get a little pull or something like that and wouldn't come in and train. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to do that. I'm going to work through anything just to kind of show everybody, man, you can get through this shit. Mm-hmm. Put blood supply in the area that you just hurt. 
and eventually we'll get better. Mm -hmm. you know, I just, you know, I mean, that's just the way I thought mentally. So that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. you, you don't think anybody picked up on that? Well, <laughs> maybe. I mean, that's that's why it helped me out. Yeah, so, no, 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 it did. I mean, it did because it it, it changes that you know that you, being injured in there was brutal. Yep. You know. It, uh, the first time I'm thinking when I when coming back from my pack, you know, when we were at the middle bench doing speed work, you know, and I get timid, we'd start working up and I get timid, like because the fucking scar tissue would keep popping and it would happen frequently. So I get timid and then fucking Kenny would come start throwing tissues and shit, you know, and you know, all this stuff. But that over a period of time, you know, you learn, yep. you know, you just push through this shit which, you know, people can debate if it's right or wrong or whatever it's going to be, but it's, it's what we did. And you just wrap it, tape it, you know, with whatever you put do. Put some pressure on it. Put two belts it. on it. Yeah. Two belts, yeah. Two belts. Mm -hmm. Well, there, I mean, yeah, knee wrap. I mean, <laughs> there was one time with him we had to take the fucking bar out. You know, we had two belts on. You had a rib out. You know, with speed work, and we had to lift the bar off the monolift onto his back because yeah. he couldn't get it out. That was yep. for Texas. I think it was Texas Senior National one. Yeah. And you, yeah, you were barely playing with 315, and I think towards the end you worked up to 400, 405 or whatever, and we were all kind of uh, like that. And you step up on the flat platform. I think you end up walking away with like 880 that day or something, but watching you squat in the gym for like that huh. six weeks, it's like we, we take it out like an old man, you know, then you do your – well, Once you're setting, it's fine. And, you know, it's, uh, at first I'm like, well, this is stupid, but then once you set up – and. Well, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just getting there is the problem. Yeah. And he opens up on the platform like 20 or whatever it was, and he went, <laughs> we're like, oh, shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I just remember you getting real skinny. I don't know if you weren't eating. What was that phase? Well, that was after no, every meal. That was, that was 198 was phase. I had all that nerve damage in my right arm, remember? I couldn't even push a yeah. door open. Yep, yep, yep. So, so you didn't like being big either. You know, so you would get big for a meat. Well, I'd, and then... He's always worried about looks. <laughs> There's GQ over here saying yeah, that. He's always yeah. worried about leverage. Every, every says the guy go. who's got a spray tan. Yeah, right <laughs> spray can and a half a can of gel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do understand that we all heard you guys arguing back and forth one time about hair gel. Yeah. And you both had hair gel in your hair. I don't have any hair. So. Uh -huh. I know, but he's making fun of him for wearing hair gel. And then you're right back. Oh, yeah. You're like, well, you got more. On. It's, you both had you the both hair gel. It was funnier than hell. Yeah. And they both looked like they never walked away from a barber shop. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> your wife cuts your hair every two weeks, you know. Mm -hmm. That was weekly. That was always oh, weekly. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to have a look. But over a period of time, those things like you're talking about is kind of what led into, you know, if somebody, for instance, you know, I'll tell this because Eskel already knows I've told the story a hundred times before and I've told it to his face. You get underneath there and somebody loses their confidence that shit, it don't fly. It don't fly at all. Yeah. Right. And it's I remember, you know, you get underneath there and he couldn't get the weight out. And he actually turned around and said, I lost my confidence. Remember that? Oh, that man. You don't. I remember telling him later, like, dude. Yeah, you, ma you got to make up an injury. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> Say you popped a rib out. Yeah. I can you give you a list. Eskel? Yes, yes. Like, I can give you a list of things. Well, you remember, it didn't actually happen like that. He already took it out. It was a heavy weight. It wasn't in the rack yet. And he said, Take it, take it. I lost my confidence. I lost my confidence. I was like, no, don't <laughs> let him in. And we just started laughing. He had to hang on to that way for no, about that's 20 right. seconds. He was said there. You remember first he says, whack it, whack it. Whack it. I have no whack confidence. It. I have no confidence. Mm -hmm. That was hilarious. That haunted him for years yes. after that. Because I remember pulling him aside, man, just say you popped a rib. Mm -hmm. I can give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> 30 things that are acceptable, man, but that is mm -hmm. not acceptable at all. Or the other dude that I'm not going to mention the name. We were in the gym. The and big dude from North Carolina. Okay, okay, yeah. When you start, you, you put on that <laughs> oh, music where it was laughing. Oh, oh, this guy was strong as an ox. He was big, huge. 320 pounds. And once like that song came I on, was it Bob? It, Bill, Bill. Bill. Mm -hmm. Big Bill. Bill. Yeah, Bill. I had him so bad. His big lip was quivering. He was going to cry. <laughs> I was pushing rewind. Play. We're on. That but tells you how long time he squatted. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a long time ago. I was, ago. I was sitting in that back room. <laughs> yeah. Rewind, play. The whole time he squatted, he, he could have beat me into oblivion. Oh, and yeah. I laughed. And I said, back where I wouldn't stop. Just play, play. It was just laughing, yeah. right? The yeah, song was just was. some guy laughing, laughing yeah. man. And, oh, man, that was funnier than shit. That guy, he almost cried that day. He, he might have. He might have. Yeah, he was pissed. And that was good. That was, there's, there's a lot of times like that. You know, it's, I'm trying to think of, so there was, um, 
there was the one there was one that because we'd bust each other's balls for everything it didn't matter what it was it just would happen actually with joe amato the one time with uh, this isn't anything oh, like that i thought you were gonna bring up this morning no no well, no i mean that's one thing there too right he was we were using the camber bar for something you know benching with the camber bar and he went to get up and that bar swung down as he was sitting up whacked him right in the head right knocked him out for a second he gets up thinks somebody hit him and we're too bu- we're we're too busy laughing at this whole thing to even take him serious for what happened with that whole thing that was yeah. funny as shit that was one of the funnier ones there I don't think you were here earlier. Remember headbutt and Joe model before that squat? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh, that was funny, man, because Joe come up. He's like, I got, I got a bump on my head. <laughs> no, no, no. Everyone, and no, this, we didn't rehearse this. It's like everybody told him the same thing. No, no, no. He had a, he had a big old egg. Yeah, just, I mean, it, as the longer it got closer to the bar, the thing just started uh, growing like that. It was a half an egg for sure. And there was, you know, that we were talking about when he took Eskel out, you know, before that was in Atlanta, right? Chicago. 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 That's right. That's right. And he's all wrapped up. Chuck <laughs> does whatever Chuck does, right? Eskel's on his back, right? <laughs> Fully wrapped, all multi by gear. He can't get up. And fucking legs and arms. It looked like a turtle, you know, stuck upside down. He, he got up and did it though. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he got up and he still made the weight. You know, which is that's impressive. That's in itself. Say, that, that kind of made, that kind of lessened the uh, I lost my out. confidence thing a lot right there. He redeemed himself. He, he did. He redeemed himself from that one for sure. Well, paper went through the gauntlet with uh, Bobby Coe and uh, all those guys. Paper Mache. Just Ritter. the fact that it, we named him Paper Mache was like well, where'd that come from? It was Yami Yuck at first, yeah. and, <laughs> is the, and then the paper thing came. That was me because remember he was getting off the bench. And his whole body would it, stick, and it would just yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way off. Yeah, it was like it, a piece it, of paper picking it up. That's what the I that's where it was yeah. like because his body was like mm-hmm. just had like a, a triple jointed. Every every yeah, yeah. every part on his mm-hmm. body was triple. His jointed. feet, mm-hmm. he would have his, his yeah. top of his toes on, on the platforms, and it would just contour to the you know yeah. the side of the wood to the floor. It was like a little Z. He would look at me, and I'd look down his feet, and one of them would be completely <laughs> over here, and this one would be over here, and I'd go, "What's wrong with your feet?" And he go. Straighten him up real quick and look at me. It was all the time, you know. He'd look at you, and his feet would be all crazy. Or at breakfast at TJ's when he was selling uh, oh, shakely, 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 shackly. We got him so mad he ends up going to the bathroom. And Louis Remember like, that? "Come on, guys, don't be doing that yeah, shit." Yeah. I got to drive home with him. Yeah, that was so funny. That was hysterical. It got him to the point where he couldn't remember what the heck yeah. it was called. Shakely. Yeah, it was some shakely, kind of like a vitamin, shackly. like a vitamin thing or something. <laughs> he goes, "Damn it." Yeah, he would get fired up. With you guys being in there for so long, at what point in time did you realize that this is different? You know, or something like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just doing meets, right? And then some success here and there and then lifters. But at a certain point in time, it's like, holy shit, you know, this whole gym is. When I came in there, there everybody there was basically from Columbus or the west side of Columbus. There were. 74 elites or whatever it was and every one of them were i may have been the first person to come in from out of town to the best of my knowledge and that that's rare you know what i'm saying to have 800 square foot or whatever it was have 74 elites out of the same fucking side of town you know and i don't i know for for me you don't really think about it you know and and until you think back like holy shit you know this was this was kind of crazy See, I think for me, the time was when we actually moved to the 800 square foot because that's when it seemed like everyone just started. Yeah. And it wasn't like Joe or Chuck, yeah. one person, everyone just started to gravitate. Yeah. And the numbers just got higher. And it was like almost every weekend, or what seemed like someone was changing the number on the board. There were stronger people coming in all the time, though. Yeah. Because just like you're talking about Fuzner. Yeah. So Fuzner and Waddle yep. and Jerry Obradovich. And then it just kept on. And then Mike Rogerio, it just kept on escalating. Yep. So. Everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses because those were big guys, you yeah, know, you big supers and stuff. So, you know, I was squatting what they squat. You know what I mean? Right. It was my point to do what they done. And that helped me to become yeah. a world champion or mm-hmm. you know, squat sure. world records, yeah. at least, just trying to keep up with those big guys. You know? Well, that's one thing that with – now, I don't know anything about, you know, the industrial drive at all. You know, all I know yeah. is, you know, the Demers thing where that was the one thing that's always kind of impressed me more, you know, about Louie than anything else is – 
somehow or another, he made us like responsible for making that each other strong. Sure. Like it was like my, my job to get you stronger, you stronger, and, and vice versa. Like if you're stronger than me, then it's your job to try to get me stronger than you. It was, and it and it was just, your will yeah. to get stronger. It was nothing. I don't think it was anything like that. I think it was just us. Man, I ain't letting that dude beat you. Yeah. Or me talking into your ear saying, don't let that motherfucker beat you. Yeah. He can't beat you. I mean, I always did that yeah, to all you it. guys. That was Mondays and Wednesdays on maximum effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? I like competition. Whoever's very, yeah. very close, you know, I'm going right up in their ear letting them know, don't let that motherfucker beat you. It's you mm -hmm. and him right now. Mm -hmm. And then that just pushes you beyond. And then the next thing you know, you're getting up on him. And he's, I'm saying the same thing to the other dude. Mm -hmm. Don't let him beat you. So that, you know what I mean? It just pushed us all. Yeah, yeah. The, I didn't think of that, mm -hmm. you know, because thinking back, that was constantly, mm -hmm. constantly, yep. you know, there was, it didn't matter because there was always somebody close. And it was always the you board know. to me. Yeah, there's yeah, a board yeah, and the there's board. always somebody, you know, and there's always somebody coming, yes. you know, up. The board you know, was where, always, always important. Yeah, I mean, that was a constant thing. And Louis is always fucking with everybody with that, too. Yeah. I never know, was into the board. I was always about picking someone and trying to beat the dude who's right above me a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, inside like the gym yeah, or, like or at a meet you know what I mean it was like I gotta beat him I didn't care what the number was I gotta beat him and then once I start hitting world records then I start worrying about numbers more right. mm -hmm. but when you were able to pull away from the say the core template you know of max effort day good morning 70% of the time deadlift whatever it is you know because you guys did it with the deadlift first right then what were some of the things that you wish we would have been doing sooner? You know, I kind of know what your answer is going to be as well with, um, you see what I'm saying? Like if we could go back kind of knowing what we know now and you guys continue to compete afterwards and did change things, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe the structure of how you're waving, how much you're wearing gear, stuff like that, you know, to go, if, if we could, you know, go back into that time and say, here's the things that we should have done different. What would they be? Definitely be free squat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wear a lot more gear. Lot mm -hmm. more gear. Do it as a meet setting. Just like we did today. We come out here and squat it over here. Go to different gyms. Go to different atmospheres. Because all, all places that we actually are going to lift at is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So the walls, the height, and where you're looking on the wall, all that stuff matters in the big detail. Of the lighting. The platform. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I, there's change, then it helps you. Right. I, think. I would say the biggest thing is diet, food. If I was to change one single thing, what would it change the whole game? None of us, I shouldn't have went from 165 to 230 pounds. It makes no sense. You were 230 pounds? <laughs> yes. He's like. But what happens though. I didn't know you got up to 230 How about pounds. Kenny? <laughs> no, no, no. Kenny's another. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 310. But then, <laughs> so, so whatever I weigh I at my max, but then I come back down. Once I learned how to eat there at the end, I learned how to eat. I mean. I got down to 190 and no bench or yep. bench over 500. Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, I you get, know, if, if I, if I, that's one big thing, the food, it would have been yeah. no more Cracker Barrel. I spent $46,000 at Cracker Barrel <laughs> in my <laughs> lifetime. You know what I mean? Because that's what we did. You know? That was just in 99. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I agree with what Joe's saying because he was the one that talked me into going down from, from 75 to 42 to 220. And I physically got stronger at 220 yes. than I was ever at 275. Yeah. I mean, even like raw numbers were still very competitive and mm -hmm. I was 50 pounds lighter. And that was just change, you know, not eating as much crap, like doing some more, you know, physical uh, repair work. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree, I think the, the diet or at least, you know, I don't want to call it diet, but watching what you're putting in your body to be a healthier person. I mean, yeah, there was a while there where, you know, the only thing we, we were measuring heads and bellies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just so stupid. You know, and it was. Well, we, we, not at the time, man. At the no, time. It was, I, I mean, no, if I was. Hell, I did pretty good yeah. on those things. Yeah. It's the other things well, I didn't I do could, so good. I could win the head take yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Chuck didn't nickname me head for no reason. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. That was a prize. There was no crown that fit the head, but that was a prize. I mean, it was a race to see how big you could get. Yeah. I mean, it was like, well, come you, on. You equated the strength with weight gain right? yes and so you just kept pushing it up well some dudes did you know what yeah. i mean and that was more heavyweight guys because louis saying. always preached get bigger yeah. matt demo get bigger you'll be a world champion mm -hmm. well he did right donnie thompson get bigger you'll be stronger donnie right. did and big but their mm -hmm. frames are huge right mm -hmm. so they had to catch up with it where 
our frames aren't that big, no. so we're getting out of our weight class. Yes. And I'm 275, you know what I mean? Mm. Kenny's 275. It's just 275. He's like yeah, he's three, three, three ten. Yeah, uh, two eighty three was yeah. the heaviest I ever stepped on yeah. the scale. How much? Right. Yeah. Two eighty three, and that was after weigh-ins in Texas at the greatest bench in America. You look good too. I was. I was shapely. I mean, you look good. Like a basketball. Big arms. Yeah. 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 Well, and there ain't they no, came in here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do remember there was a, maybe it was Chicago again, where Jesse Callum was talking to all of us. Basically, you know, well, he wasn't even being polite about it. He was just like, you're a bunch of fat fucking bloated yeah. pigs. You know, this, can't be, they, this can't be helping you. Right. And we're all, and I'm like, well, it is. You know, it's like. It, it, he's right. You no, know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, looking back, wrong. you know, he, he wasn't wrong, no. you know, especially because it was just pounding everything, yeah. man. It was, for me, it was how bloated can I get? Yeah. Yes. Yep. You know, then you, for leverage. Yeah. And I'm practicing, you know, like every Friday would be like the practice because I'd push it up because on Friday, as you said, you know, a lot of times we're working up. That gets lost in a lot of translations too, you know, where it's the, the eight sets of two or whatever it was. Right. Say, that was half the time. You know, that other, started off like that a lot of times and yeah. ended something else. Put a plate always. on. Yep, Dude always. say, I'll take a plate. Put another plate on. Mm -hmm. And then next thing yeah. you know, you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's competitive too. So you're yeah. not going to not take the plate. Right. You know, you're, you're going to have to. You don't want to miss because that's worse than not taking it. So it's a, it's a fucked up kind of balance yep. there. You got to figure that out and fake an injury or something. <laughs> you know, and, um, and not sit down. That was the other thing I remember was not sit down. You know, that was with the... the during the squat, squat sets? stuff, yeah. you know, you didn't sit the fuck down. You know, somebody did. It was we we're all on their ass about that. You know, lazy pieces of shit. You know, because mm -hmm. you actually you didn't have the time. Right. That was one of the things that I didn't like when we went from Demers. You guys went to Industrial Drive. It was way bigger. Yeah. Right. You think it's better, but it wasn't. You know, because when we were, that was so small, you'd have the groups. You know, say so, say so Louie and I would be squatting, and you and Chug Todd are running whatever. You know, somebody's changing the plates, changing the box, and so forth. We go over to the other place, and then when they're done squatting, they're fucking gone. Yeah. You know, they're doing reverse hypers and shit, and you're like, yeah. no, wait a minute, you know? 60 foot away yeah, from I gotta, the Yeah, I got to change my own fucking box. That, that, you miss that yeah. back and forth. The, team. That, that tempo, Big you know, team. the, the yeah. momentum. The team thing. The team and it, thing means a lot. It drove me fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, but you think about it, when we was on Demarest, I mean, even if two people were squatting, everyone was within literally oh, like yes. a 10 by 10 box. Yeah, and I think that's what happened when it, that box got bigger. Yep. You know, it made it easier. You know, I don't know how much of that was a culture change or, you know, it could yeah, be that know. too. You know, but it, that was problem, you know, because yeah. I could never jive. I think a lot of the know? foundation left, though. Shortly after it left there, so that that those fundamentals, I just remember the the crew before us. You know, we would come in to help them. Then when we would squat, then the crew after us would come in and spot, and it would just be a trade off. Then then you yep. were done. You mm -hmm. know, so yep. you helped out twice while you did yours. So yep. it was a little different too, because the um, if if you did try to call somebody out, you know, to to work, you know, on the set, it, they weren't doing it. You know, some of the guys that when we moved over to the you weren't, like I said, you guys weren't yeah. there, but we went over the chalk, would know what I'm talking about. You'd move over to that other place and you, you'd start and they, they didn't want to do it. And you're like, well, fuck, you know, I, I guess I still will, but you kind of, you, nobody, there's nobody talking shit. You know, there's, there's nobody pushing it. You got to, now you got to rely a hundred percent on yourself, which was fine, you know, but it's a lot better. You know, if you're worried that, you know, his ass is going to end up doing 200 pounds more and your goal is to fuck, not have it be 200 pounds more you know, whatever it's going to be, but then you're the only one, you know, it was a big change. Well, when, when they went over there, didn't they start in one space and then expand into a second space? I wasn't there for that. They did. That's what I, I, I was I, re I stopped in and visited one yeah. time and like maybe two times. And that's why I realized like the place they're in still right now. Yeah. 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 There's, well, it, it still is. It's two walls. It's right. two, two, two openings. Yeah. yeah. So it's an opening. But they still, when they moved over there, there was only in one of those. There was right? only so one at the very beginning. Then right. They expanded okay. it. Louis just started getting more equipment, more sure. equipment, more equipment. Yeah, because now I mean, it's probably, it's, what, 4,000-ish square feet. I mean, it's pretty good size. Probably mm -hmm. about half of this. It might be. I mean, if you take both sides and combine it, it might be the same as this. Maybe. I mean, I was just over there last week. So maybe. A little smaller. I mean, it's still... Far it, cry from what we were used to. Well, you know what? When mm -hmm. I walked into there the last week, it was... It was a lot smaller than I remembered, okay. right? Because I remember going from that small place, right? And then that, that place was like huge seemed, yeah. when we went over. It seemed to just giant. Then when I walked in there the other day, I'm like, this is small. Right. You know, it, it, 
it's not that small. I mean, it's, it wasn't what I thought I remembered. Let's put it that way, yeah. which fucks with your head a little bit because you don't know what do you remember and not remember. Yeah, I'm almost, in a way, I'm almost glad I didn't go there. Yeah. But it was, it was because to me, it, regardless of when you left our 800 square feet, like to me, that's what you said. That's the West Side I remember. So when you came through the door, like you were greeted by the side of the power rack, the bench power rack, right? You could barely get through the door because dumbbells were on the floor. Like to me, that was the whole point of the gym. Mm-hmm. Your little table, you know, where you could throw your beepers on. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I'm not lying. You are not lying. <laughs> yep. That's the same. That, yeah, you're right. That's the same table where we kept the tissues for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was right next to the beaver yeah, box. Right. I put them right next to the, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with, with the lifters that you're working with now, what are the differences that you see with them compared to, say, 10, 15 years ago? Just weak point wise, technique wise, because gears change things. The way the gear works it is different. Has, but it's really, really hard to get someone's form right for the gear that we're using right now. Mm-hmm. It's really, really hard because it locks up so hard so quick. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. I mean, structure just where your position is. It's I mean, there's time you have to be in those suits quite a bit right now. I mean, a lot in order to get it right. Mm-hmm. Did you find that was true with uh, the canvas when you went in? I mean, when you started to really work in it, you know, when you broke out and well, started training Well, I was just figuring more. it out. You know what I mean? I was always figuring it out. So yeah. And, and I could tell where the leverages are. If, you, if you're bent over a little bit, when you get to the bottom, the canvas don't stretch anymore. So all of a sudden it hits like this. If your shoulders are forward, all of a sudden all you're gonna do is your butt's gonna do this yep. and your Go shoulders over. are going to go like that. So then it was like, all right, now what do I do? I feel like I'm sitting on a box and can't go any lower. So the only thing I can do at this point is keep my frame where it is, start opening my knees, and try to set through that little hole. And I started doing that, and that started working. So I was able to get closer to a parallel position. And then, and then you know what I mean, then where the bar sets on your back, whether it's up higher and it needs to go up a lot higher in order to get straight up and down. Because if it's if it's lower on your back, then your shoulders have to something has to stabilize the weight. Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean. You're in front mm-hmm. of yourself, and there you go at the very bottom. You're gonna have problems again. Mm-hmm. So it's very very technical. So do you have them in the gear all the time? No, not all the time. But using that form for everything, I don't care if if you're doing um, any squats. On a box or without a box, you're going to use that form. You know what I mean? Um, raw lifting is totally different form than what you have down there. But when I have them do raw, I'm going to still have them squat the exact same way. So every time they get under the bar, it's going to be the same. Mm-hmm. Every time. You know what I mean? You don't want to change anything because old habits, they're going to happen when you get heavy weights on the bar. Right? Mm-hmm. What about mentality-wise? Um, I don't know. I haven't been trained a whole lot of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I know it's different. Everybody's phones and everybody's, mm-hmm. what did I do and all that type of stuff instead of listening to their training partners as far as what you did right, what you did wrong. Mm-hmm. So, you no, know, everything's just changed. But. Well, there's, while we were there, you, you, test, you tested everybody you know, all the time. It's just kind of who you are, what you did. And then after a certain point in time, you didn't test them anymore. Either they've proven themselves or whatever it was. You know, it's, can you remember any instances where somebody would did something to your work? Okay, I'm not going to have to test this person anymore. No, not really. Are you just? I mean, I I don't even notice if I do or don't. Oh. You know what I mean? I really don't. <laughs> um, if you're a good buddy of mine, yeah. then that's what I'm be in your ear saying whatever to try to get you going to the next level. Mm-hmm. Like Kenny's over there about ready to do something. I'm gonna go over there and talk something to him, try to motivate him to go to the next thing and and i've always been like if someone comes up to me and says that motherfucker thinks he can beat you boy you're gonna burn me Mm -hmm. up you know Mm -hmm. what i mean Mm -hmm. i'm gonna kill myself to prove that that's not gonna happen so i know it's gonna happen to everybody else too Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because i mean that's bottom line you know we're here to to win Mm -hmm. that's why you're doing it. it's individual sport you know you're here to win so 
you put that on someone's shoulders and usually they take off with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a, we, we had a lot of people come in, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, first, I, I guess before going down this road, there was a lot of times it was just you, me and Kenny in the gym and we're like, the fuck happened? You know, we had like 15 people and now there's three. Then Louie would say, hey, can you guys find people? And we're like, how? Like, what? we don't train. Like, where are we going to find people? Like, Hajis? Like, where are we, we going to go find people to come in? But when these other, when the newer people would come in, it, I can speak for myself. You know, I'll help them, right? But I'm not like totally committed, you know, to helping them until I would see that they were going to yeah. work. Right. And I mean, and actually come back from, I mean, there were a lot of things like, are they going to work? Are they going to work if they're hurt? You know, are they, you know, there are certain things where, are they going to be here every week? Yes. Cause a lot of them didn't last long. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, I remember one dude come up from Florida that was, you know, super, super, I can't remember his name or super, super serious was staying with demo dude lasted like a week and a half, you know, completely moved. And he couldn't handle it. I'm like, what the fuck can you not handle? Because I mean, you, well, you're still there at the time. I mean, it's like, what can you not handle about it? I, yeah, but could it be the fact that if they're coming from a gym in Florida where they're the top dog and they run into where they can't beat our 198? Like, is, is the pressure too much for them? It's, that's what it is. Yeah, I think it is. Louis, Louis ran all kinds of people out mm -hmm. <clears throat> over here at the gym where he's at now, right before mm -hmm. I had left the last time, you know. Because you really can't powerlift anymore. Mm -hmm. So right before I left, there he would always invite people over all the time that were pretty strong. They would come in and they wouldn't be there long. And next thing you know, they'd leave. They would mm -hmm. actually start going backwards. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, I know exactly what you mean because I think you know that's what we are looking at when people would come in. Right. You know, like we, we're going to help. I mean, you're going to help technique wise, and all like you want to see them, see, but you're not fully. What am I looking for? Vested? Mm -hmm. A lot of times technique, it takes a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All of a sudden you're changing structures. Right. Well, you're, you're not strong in, in the structure that we've just taught you to be strong in. Mm -hmm. You're not there yet. You have to take it back and then build it up. Mm -hmm. The suit's going to help you at the bottom of a bunch. So now it's got to turn into more leg press than mm -hmm. what it ever has before. So everything, now you got to be more leg dominant than what you did before. But it's not quad dominant per se. You still have to load your ass and your hamstrings. Mm -hmm. So it's that balance, you know, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Well, there's also a lot of pressure, you know, as you well, said, when sure, they come yeah. in because, you know, everybody's stronger, but, you know, deal with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because at the end of the day, it's, I still got to get myself stronger. You know, if he's 200 pounds stronger, so be it. But I still have to get stronger before I worry about trying to compete with him, right. you know, being stronger. It still kind of falls back on that. And there's there's self-pressure with that. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other pressure. But then there's the pressure we would put on him as well, you know, which was that was part. That's what that's where I've kind of always had it's selfish in a way. I've always kind of had a, a issue with people being on the board that weren't actually there. Right. Right. It's like, no wait a minute, you know, there's more to that, you know, granted it's Louis board, you can do whatever the fuck he wants to do with it, but there's more to that. Like you didn't have to deal with Louis's good side and bad side. You know, you didn't have to deal with everybody throwing tissues at you. Yeah. You didn't have to deal with all these, you, uh, there, there was other things you had to deal with that made that spot worth having that spot. Right. Right. Outside of just somebody swooping in and doing the lift. It's like, wait a fucking minute. And, and that don't work like that. You know, those, a lot of those people up there almost quit three or four times, you know, almost got thrown out three or four times, maybe did, you know what I'm saying? And then came back. Yeah. And some of that, I think other people would embrace it when they'd come in and other ones just couldn't handle it. You know, I don't think we are overly, and maybe other people could say different. I don't think we are overly assholish, which I think gets portrayed yeah. You know, a lot of and their times. fitness level, sometimes they're just not up fitness level. So they yes. get in, they get blasted, they get sore and they start going behind and they're like the same form. Here. Right. right. Or they wouldn't you know do the I mean? things it's they had to level. do to get in shape either. Right. You know, granted, we are bloated and all this other kind of stuff, but we had a high work capacity. Mm -hmm. As bloated as we were, we could still do, if we needed to, 15, 20 sets back to back on the speed work. You could do that, but not walk down the hallway without stopping three times <laughs> and leaning up against the yeah. wall. Well, yeah. <laughs> or in the airport. Well, I, I told a, I, I've told a story one time where Chuck and I got, because a monolith was out, we got stuck squatting in a fucking power rack. He probably don't remember it because it's just a normal fucking day for him. And he's like right off his broken neck and he's not anywhere close. He's like 50%. And 
um, we're going back to back squatting. And it was one of those, as soon as he's done, you, the push yeah. person out of the way type of thing. We got to like 15 sets or whatever it was, and he started to look tired, and he's not. And then it ended up being like 40 some fucking sets. But I re that's the day I realized he hates to lose more than he likes yeah. to win. <laughs> uh, I'm like, this is, I, there's not, I could, first off, I couldn't do any more anyhow. I could do 100, it don't matter. He ain't gonna fucking lose. You do 101. Well, that's fucking ridiculous. And Louie afterwards, <laughs> you guys are fucking idiots. And like, well, whatever, you know, it's, it's a good story now, but. Sure. Yeah, you know, I thought for the first time, you know, I'm thinking of every dumbass fucking easy bar tricep extension. You owe me four more. Like, I'm going to get this motherfucker today, even though he's 50 percent with a fucking you know, just got out of a cast, whatever it was. You can nah. leave that part out of the story, you know, 10 years later. Well, no, I, it's, it's <laughs> he was not anywhere close to his best. If, if, he, if he was, I wouldn't even tried. Yeah. You know, it was just. But that that's part of it, too, though. If they, they come in and they don't have that condition and they get tested like that. You know, sometimes the worst the gr worst squat group you could have would be two people. You know, mm -hmm. because that you get that little come on, let's go. Yeah, a little bug up your ass, whatever it is, and you push the tempo fuck just out. keeps and on just, going just up. Wear them out with the tempo, then maybe they won't work up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all right. kinds of things going through yeah. my head. You know, and because they work up, you're fucked. You know, it's well. You know, I had to squat with Louie using bands, which was another fucking story in itself because he's on pin one. You know, hole one on the mont lift. I'm on fourteen. <laughs> You know, that was, a, that was a whole other cluster. There's no more band tension hired guys. It's, no, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. No, he told me that a million fucking times. Then, then we fucking throw Chuck into the whole thing. Right? Look at my briefs. I can put my, my He said, I know the bands briefs. are the same. I'm like, no, the, what do you mean the bands are the same? <laughs> the bands are the same. I'm like, dude, it's this much higher. Yeah. Well, Chuck can do it. I'm the fuck kind of answer is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that makes no sense. So one time I took the, the boxes that we used to deadlift on and I threw them in the monolith. I said, do that. And he says, well, if you do. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because it was already like eight fucking blues and a purple. It was when it was way, you went further after that. But it was when it was way out of hand. And I'm like, I can't. I couldn't even get it out to begin with. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's, he never did it. But I'm like, I'll get this son of a bitch. I'm going to make him actually feel. Because his bands would. They flap at the bottom. You're like, wait, <laughs> wait a goddamn minute. This, this ain't right. You know, but that's just like the fucking jack stands taking it out on the same stand he was because your lower back's weak. You know, it always come yeah. back to your low back's weak. Then he would always squat in those canvas shorts, but say they didn't That's what I mean. They're loose. Look how loose they, look they how are. Look how loose they are. Look, take them off. <laughs> I had a, somebody had a picture. I don't, like I said, we asked earlier, like how the pictures got taken. I remember one day taking it, but somebody had a picture of somebody putting his, I don't even know. You can't call them briefs because they're like jean like, shorts. It was like ten people. There's like probably yeah. six people, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And he's all for the ground trying to get in these things. He's like, these ain't tight. These, these ain't, ain't tight. tight. These ain't tight. Like, what the hell? You mean they ain't tight? <laughs> Why did you do it then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were special made. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they really helped though. You know what I'm saying? Because it's I've worn a thick, thick yeah. briefs, right? And they don't really. Hope. It was just so bunched up material yeah. that kind of helped tighten. tighten up mm -hmm. at the bottom. So, yeah, like it's it, it was tight, off. seriously, on his ah, leg. Yeah, the hip flex is going to build up in yeah. the hip flexors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, I'm trying to think of some other ones like with the bench where uh, oh, there, I'm, the other ones I got blasted on was. The, we had the little bolts, you know, so it wasn't like it was a, a hard lift off, right? I mean, I'll be the first to say it wasn't a hard lift off, but after my pack, I couldn't get shit out. You know, after a certain weight, say 315, I had to have somebody get it out there. Nah, shit didn't fly either. You know, I asked for a lift off. Louis jumped my ass, you know, you, it made you guys not lift off to me. Yeah. And I'm trying to get this fucker off the pen and I can't and you're all laughing. That that this is the shit that I'm talking about. You got to go through that, right, to be able to. They you're going at, as you're famous at Kenny's growl. height, though. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the growl mm -hmm. stuff. You're on Kenny's pen height too. Well, they, I, I, I didn't <laughs> think about here. that, which is extremely high. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you had one, didn't you? Have one where you couldn't even get it out of the rack? Yeah, that's what I'm talking it's like about. Three sixty five yeah. or something like yeah. that on there. He couldn't get it out. I'm madder in hell. I'm madder than no hell. Louis like, don't lift off to him. Joe's I'm like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> no, no. Well, so, Lou, Lou had a special liking to you. Oh, I know I mean, he did. Was, uh, yeah, for sure. It was, it was more so than the rest of us, I believe. Oh you, uh, yeah. You, you. Why well, I, I would, I would talk shit back to him. Yes. You know, and that's a, 
a lot of other, a lot of you guys, what you did, I mean, but a lot of guys didn't. No, I didn't. You know? no, I no, I did. I did like a motherfucker, you know, because I'm, he, he talks shit to me. And I, I think, too, that when you squat in, in the same group, you know, back to back, back to back for fuck years, mm -hmm. you know, you, it kind of opens that a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, because you're going to say shit while you're in those sessions that you're not normally going to say anyhow. Yeah. But he would blow shit out and I'd just blow it right back, you know, and sometimes he'd get madder in hell. You know, but other times he would do. I mean, it's, I never, I, looking back now, you, the dude was 52, whatever oh, he yeah. was. Yeah. You know, now being in that age, you're like, Jesus Christ, how do yeah. you do that shit? It's amazing. You know, then I'm jumping his ass for being an old man and being, you know, worthless and weak and all this. Lou crap. is tough, man. He tough how old was dude. you? How old was you when you last competed? Like, when was your? 49. 49. I'd have been 50 in May, and that was March. I was uh, Arnold. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can't even imagine doing it today. He was 52. You know, yeah, and, that was crazy. You know, and they're talking shit and, you know, blasting it. So I didn't act like he was like, fuck, I didn't even know what 52 was. No. And now I do. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's a hard way, too. <laughs> you're like, holy shit. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know that I would want to be like I at this point in life, like. Still involved in that competing at that level, mm -hmm. just because, I mean, the bumps and bruises you feel. Now, I can't imagine if you make it, you know, if, if you was him and. Then what you feel like at 70 or 75, you know? Oh, no, he, I can't imagine he that. He told me it when I came up. It would be so exacerbated that like, one time, brutal. One time to visit, I met him at breakfast there and, and uh, was explaining to him, you know, what I was doing. I was going to try to get down here to, or up here to compete at Lexan's gym or one of the meets there. And I was preparing and he says, get out. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, because get out now while you can walk. He goes, you, you're, you're, everything that you have going on right now is going to get so much worse yep. when you get 60. I'm like, I, I still got time, Lou. That's what you Yeah, that's around us, the corner know? now. <laughs> you know, I still got time, man. Come on, let's go. How old was you then? I think uh, 52. Okay. Yeah. He, was, he ain't never said that shit to me. <laughs> he, goes, he told me, he says, get out. He goes, worst thing I ever did was stay in it. He goes, all these shots and everything oh. and all this special treatment I'm done. Yeah, I couldn't do it. He goes, none of us work. He goes, you, you got a granddaughter, get out. I'm like, nah. I mean, he was a wreck then yeah. when I was there. When I started, he was all, I me. Mean, he was biceps and shoulders mm -hmm. and knees. And Oh, I remember on a regular basis, shooting saline and every yeah. Oh, yeah. constant, you know, you're like, he's like, give me a shot. And, he, you know, he'd all <laughs> shoot it right. I'm like, are you sure? I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. but he was retired when I came in. I mean, yeah. he was not competing ever again. Right. You know, then you opened your mouth yeah. and pissed him off but then he but that changed everything too it, it really did i mean when he started training again it changed a lot right yeah. because it's because now he's for me and now he's like fucking beating me right. like, wait a minute this is kind of fucked up you know he's like dead you know and now i gotta worry about him beating me you know so it, it changed i think it changed everybody in the gym a little bit yeah. it definitely changed him what year was you that know? do you remember Hi, oh, man because he was only when that happened i think he was like 42 or something 44 maybe like that was a he long was 42 when we started he was 42 wasn't he? okay mm -hmm. because he so, was what 50 when he'd been 600 right and he was he was uh 56 when he actually did that nine he squatted squat. 900 yeah well wow. that's amazing yeah that's absolutely amazing for the the path and the history that he had so yeah that's that's next level stuff so when, when some of this shit come in, like the, the chains, you know, and granted, we're all kind of living at the time, you know, it's, it's, it's a stupid question to ask because I can't even ask it myself. Like, what did you think when he brought in the chains? It's like, you just didn't think shit, right? Just, just, just another thing to try. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, it was another, always, I think what people don't realize is all the shit that didn't work. Hmm. You know, all the, all the experimental movements and try this and then it phased away and you kept that core, I'm going to call it like eight or 10 things or whatever yeah. it was, but we tried so many different things that didn't work. And obviously you don't publicize all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, so now it's chains, bands, you know, max effort day, dynamic effort day, whatever. Yeah. Do you remember the, it was exactly the, it? band, chains, weight, it was, it was like 8,000 pounds, so weight, all at the pounds. same time. Yep. It was like a billion pounds at the yeah. top. Yeah, it took it took mm -hmm. longer to load everything up than it did to do the lift. Yeah, I yeah. think that's why it faded away. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. What's that? I said I gotta go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Thanks for coming, man. <laughs> <laughs> there was no break to yeah. come in at the right time. But yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that, that, works. Off, that works. I appreciate for coming out. Well, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, Chuck. Guys, take care. Yep, that works. <clears throat> so with getting back to the, the things that didn't work, you know, what are some of the ones that you remember? Yeah, you're cool. <laughs> you going to take right, your water? We'll see <laughs> yeah, Chuck, you want your water? You okay. Do you, what are some of the things that you can remember that came in? And because there, I, I'm trying to think right now because there was a lot of stupid shit that kind of came in and went. Every, actually, everything to me looked stupid when it came yeah. in. You know, like the man arrays, like I what is this? I mean, I don't necessarily remember anything that sticks out. I don't think the weight weight releasers, weight releasers didn't, didn't work. Catch. That didn't no. catch at all. That was too gimmicky because right. it yeah. worked different for me than it did with him. Right. Mm -hmm. we were almost the same size and nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that caught on. Um, I think anything that helped uh, increase your speed or did, uh, knock down your speed, that speed curve, because I think where the chains, the chains came in to help, that's where a lot of people took off, right? Because everybody was super explosive except for Dameron. Everybody was super, super explosive. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and, you know, you just pretty much all the energy that you exerted off your chest on the bench just floated to the top. Right. Well, a lot of us had weak triceps at the top, you know, except right. for triceps over here. But, uh, you know, then when the chains came in, everything became a full press and it slowed that speed curve down yeah. and everybody's strength. So we're like, OK, yeah, well, you, had to grind, the, you had to grind a little bit, put more. it on the squats and carry it over on the squats, you know. Cause See, I had, wasn't a big fan of like I love chains. That was my, yeah. because to me. See you, buddy. See you, Chuck. So to me. And I still stand by this today. You could weigh a chain. A chain, remember the chains were like 20 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So and it dangled a little bit on the ground. So call it 18. But everyone always tried to put poundage to band tension. And to me, it's tension. It's not right. pounds. And so the overkill, and maybe maybe my central nervous system wouldn't take it. I didn't like doing bands. I would like using the bands, like to your point, Todd, where it just slowed you briefly down, yeah. that you had to push against something to accommodate resistance. Mm -hmm. But... That's why chains to me, because you could alter the height of a chain. You know, do you want it almost all the way off the ground or just barely off the ground? Mm -hmm. So to me, chains, the things, back to your original question, I just remember the things that actually worked for me, not the things that really didn't. Mm -hmm. Because, you, I mean, when you go think about it, I mean, this was 20 plus years ago now. No, it's a long time. Yeah, to remember that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I think a lot of people's lifts in general, regardless regardless of how much they use them chains and bands were instrumental in a lot of people yeah i mean the chains took my squat yeah huge. Yeah. it was joe Definitely. and i this real fast and it was yep. i had a squat before they came in that was one of those lifts that you do where your form doesn't break and it's hard right i mean you, you after after you do that lift because your form don't break and you barely made it yep. you're, you're like but like what do i do now right like now i have to like actually get it's different when you go to a meet and you leave weight on the platform sure. where you fell out of the groove and you're like well if i can fix this this is like shit you know and the chains took it like a hundred pounds more yeah. just, uh, joe as well motto as well just, boom just right away i'm like whoa what the hell yeah because when you when you pulled it off you still in your mind you're pushing that much harder yeah and like it, it almost like would you know someone super explosive like the bar would pop off your back at mm -hmm. the top same thing in the bench i remember doing speed work with like George and Rob and I don't remember what we worked up to but then at the end we pulled the chain off and you literally felt like you could let go of the bar and it would keep mm -hmm. going because you were just so you know bent on pushing as hard as you can all the way through the top where before you kind of coasted at the top because yeah. it did get easier mm -hmm. so to me those were the two things for me that actually made the biggest difference and it regard it's not that I was a huge squad or anything like that but just using those I think another big difference was when I first started coming out, the out at Van Horns, the the weight that we were using for speed work, you know, was like three sixty five, four hundred five, yep. right? It was because I was on your bench. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, and we were moving it. Sure. You know, it was. But then I think Van Horn or somebody got hurt, and they had to start using less weight. Then they put fifty pounds on them immediately. Go wait, everybody, it went down. Yep. Way down. And then as that kept going down, the benches kept going up, right? Which is like reverse of what you would think is yep. supposed to happen. But not one of us was like, no, no, don't take the weight off. I mean, I think we were kind of relieved in a way. Because, you know, that's fucking why. It was it was it really speed work, you know, there towards, yeah. you know, 405 on that eighth set or whatever it was. But it went from 405 
you know, all the way down to, I remember using 185 with yeah. a, with a light band, Yeah. you know, to bench a hundred pounds more. Right. It's like, that's a crazy ass yeah. change there. Yeah. It's, it's hard to believe that because to your point, I remember that the top sets would use like 405 for speed work, eight triples, what mm-hmm. we would do. But then even myself, now granted I was in a lighter weight class at the time, but I remember like 245 and some change and you oh, were, yeah. and your bench just kept going up and up and up. I mean, I mind, I think at 220, I was 12 pounds off my all time best. And that was even in a full meet. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, hell, if you could have been, you know, trained with 135, I probably would have done mm-hmm. to get the same results. Were you still there when bands came in? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I remember with, with that one, Louie, we were at oh, Cracker Barrel, Bob, whatever it was at the time, whatever the restaurant of choice was yeah. at the time, you know, it's, and back then we were paying for our breakfast. He wasn't yeah. paying for ours. So it was a little bit different, you know? Yeah. We missed that one. Yeah. We yeah. kind of, we kind of missed that one. You know what? He probably wasn't making as much sure. either at the yeah. time either. So in all fairness with that, but we left and we went to this basketball clinic, right? And this Dick Hartzell's got a booth and the dude's laying on the ground doing these stretches and shit with the bands, you know, using the little platform, you know, bands around his feet going, taking his feet out like a, you know, super, super wide, like a porn star and then back in. Yeah. And I'm like watching this and I watching the hamstring stretching and I'm like, all I'm thinking of being my 300 and, you know, pound Terrence acne something. bullet ass, right? Just like, we ain't doing this, right? And I'm like trying to like run this through my head, like, what are we going to do here? You know, he already told us not to stretch, you know, flex it. So I'm not, I'm, it's just not, I'm not, <laughs> not getting it, man. I'm just not <laughs> registering. It. Then he gave me the blue one and he's like, well, try that. And I put it around my back, tried to bench with it. I'm like, this, this is fucking all I can't. Couldn't do it. I, I did it, but I had to like zippy myself up right. to be able to do it. He buys all of them. And I'm thinking, as we're driving back to the gym, I'm thinking, the fuck are we going to do with these things? And he pull in and put them on the bar to, you know, to squat with. No, it was the bench. It was yeah. the bench with at the time. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Then I, at the time, I'm like, this is going to be awesome because the chains were, you know, were around for about a year, maybe, maybe a year and a half. It's funny because people ask me, when do you know? when should you use chains and bands? I'm like, well, if you go according to what I saw, you don't use any of them for three years. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you time. use chains for about a, a year, a year and a half, whatever that was. Then you do the bands. Cause that's how we did it. You know, we didn't have that. Yeah. You know, right. We didn't know. But at the time I was thinking, wow, if this is going to do what the chains did, then it's going to put another hundred pounds another jump, on. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't foresee it was going to be like us putting 30 chains per side, Yeah, right. you know, cause it did. So because I'm not involved in powerlifting anymore, let me ask you. So with newer lifters coming in, do you advise them to start using like bands and stuff? Right. Cause to me, you had to build like a core strength before you could start putting that stuff on. And now you see people. You know, whether they're 16, 17 years old in high school doing like mm-hmm. band work. And I don't know if that's beneficial at that point without. Depends. You know, I, I'd have two answers on that. So yeah. say it's a, a very, very true beginner and you're trying to teach them how to stay tight. If you just put a little bit of band on, like a mini band, yeah. a light band, as soon as they take it out of the squat, they, they have to get tight. Mm-hmm. They have to because yeah. it's going to throw them around. And then the other thing that's hard to teach a beginner is how to stand up with intent. You know, now if they sit down, say they sit at the bottom of the squat or they sit on the box and they just try to stand up slow with just even a little, they real, they real, they got to stand up right. outside of that. Probably not for beginners at all. Sure. And then the other question becomes when you become more advanced, they kind of ground you, you know, when you're yep. squatting, cause it's like two other legs, you know, cause I think that for me, it was a big part of the reason when they came off, I couldn't stabilize yep. myself. Because you was moving you know, around. Shaking so around because you this ends up, you know, kind of stabilizing you. Where it has its point, but I think they have to come out, you know, before. So to, your, to answer your question, for a younger lifter, only for what I'm saying, for to teach, because it's kind of hard to teach somebody to stay tight. Yeah. You, as, you know, you, even on the bench, you're trying to teach people how to stay tight before they lower the bar and they're a beginner. They don't, they can't wrap their head around like, well, you, what do you mean? Yeah. I mean, you put a band on and if they don't, it's going to go you know, yeah. all over the place, but yeah, you can't tell them to tighten their lats if they don't have lats yet. Yeah. Well, they don't even know what tight <laughs> is. Yeah. They don't, yeah, they, is, don't right? they don't get that. Yeah. It's a different thing. It took me 10 years to figure out what the hell you were saying when it came to that. <laughs> tighten your lats. I'm like, man, 
<laughs> then when you actually tighten your latch, you're like, oh, shit, now that makes sense. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Squeeze your glutes. I am. So when I actually squeeze my glutes, oh, crap, boy, that makes it a whole lot easier. You know, it just, but you just, sometimes you just yeah. don't have that connection. So it's, it's funny. I think we talked about it last time, like verbal cues. Mm -hmm. I wish we would have been better at that a long time ago. Because there's certain things that even today, you know, you hear people say that, that totally make sense that we didn't say back then. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had our own verbal cues, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we probably all could have done a better job at yeah. other than Coach McCoy over here. It was mm -hmm. probably the best one to like pick apart and that's in a positive way what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Because I remember and I don't even know who told me this, but when I was benching, they said, push yourself through the bench. Mm -hmm. like down through the bench versus pressing the bar off of your chest. And that's after that, that's all I ever thought about was separating myself from the bar, not actually pressing the bar. Mm -hmm. And it worked for me, obviously. I think there's a lot of things that we just, at that time we took for granted, just assumed everybody else knew how sure. to do, you know, how to, how to make the belt tight yep. would be an example of that, you know, squeeze the bar, you know, yep. things like that. You know, I think we are doing certain things that, you know, say with their feet today, they call it rooting. You know, if you, you know, we, we're bracing, we're getting under there, we're digging our feet into the plat. We're kind of doing the same thing. We just didn't know it was rooting. We didn't have a term for you it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> or the bracing, we were kind of doing that, but it wasn't really yeah. the bracing. We just didn't know. So it, it makes you wonder, though, how many people came through there that weren't doing that. Right. That we didn't see. Sure. You know, because, you know, I came in when Louis was beating everybody in the stomach with uh, metal with rods, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, with the stick, yeah. oh, you know, and that teaches you to, to flex, yeah. right? It's, you're kind of looking at it like, this is kind of stupid, but, you know, and there were, there were times where if somebody was squatting, you never knew if somebody was going to come whack you, yes. you know, with uh, the stick. Yep. Board press, the same thing, right? You lay down, somebody's going to put the board on. You don't know if they're going to fucking whack you. And we, I don't even know if we knew what we were actually teaching at the time. We just had the opportunity to yeah. whap somebody in the stomach with a board, yeah. and they didn't know if we were going to do it or not. Or just that's funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but think about what it was teaching us to do. Yeah. You know, keep the belly tight. Yeah. You know, get it expanded. Get ready to get hit. You know, cause sometimes it happened. You yeah. know, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, I might have whacked a couple of people. Oh, no, there's no doubt. <laughs> there's no doubt. Um, the with you, when you guys left, you didn't have, well, maybe you did. I mean, you didn't have the, I don't want to say identity crisis, but you didn't have the same issues that a lot of powerlifters go through sure. when they leave. You know, so why do you think that is? Had other things. Like, I left because my career started to, yeah. I was, got into law enforcement and just got busy with that and just didn't have time. Because if I'm not 100% in, it was kind of like, we just got to go. Yeah. So I always continue to work out. Just, yep. just didn't have it in me anymore. Just done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I do find that, I mean, there's people still to this day, what's that bar about? Like that defines them. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, come on. And well, those, you, those same people were never really anybody at Westside Barbell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even before that though, you were working your ass off. I mean, you were yes. working, you know, it's, it's funny because people ask you, you know, how do you balance, you know, work hours and powerlifting? I'm like, you know, this dude was working like fucking 60, yeah. three jobs, you know, and still coming in the gym yep. to be able to do that, you know, so, and did very, very well, you know. But also just, I think I got out with any, with no real injuries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was always in the back of my head. I mean, Joe was dumb enough to injure himself years later doing all this crazy shit that he yeah. does. Now. Yeah. But that's. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Because that had to, it definitely had to hit you to some degree. So I would, I would echo what Joe is saying. I think, and I, I think this for our entire morning crew, and I'm not, I don't want to include the night crew because I really didn't know mm -hmm. them. But everybody we trained with, this core nucleus of people, all had stable home lives and yeah. careers. And so we didn't necessarily, or I didn't, I should say, I didn't use powerlifting as an identity. It was something that I did that I loved that was a huge hobby of, of nothing. I mean, we didn't make money from it. We spent a mm -hmm. lot. We traveled a lot. But I think part of being able to walk away was you had something else. Just like Joe, my career continued to progress, right? So at some time, you know, you're not making 35 grand anymore, right? You're supporting a household. You have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, and am I going to turn down a promotion that's going to pay me, you know, let's say twice the amount of money to continue to do something that's still just a hobby. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I felt like when I was done, I didn't have a lot left to prove for me. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think what I did for myself, you know, I was happy with where I had landed with what I had done. So it was easy for me to walk away and just turn that same energy and focus towards something different. Mm -hmm. But to Joe's point, I mean, I still work out. I still try and stay in decent shape, you know, not obviously strength, you know, strength training per se. Yeah. But I, I had something to focus on. But I had that from, I mean, I've had the same job since I was 18 years old. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad what you said, what you, what you said, because the, there's a perception, you know, that, that, that crew that we're in that time that we're in that, you know, we're just all thugs, yep. you know, and that, that wasn't the no, case. No. Like it was the farthest from the truth. I mean, yes, there were some, I'm not going to, nobody's going <laughs> to deny that. Yes, there were some, there were. But the majority of the people barely had the time right. to come in and train and get yep. back. You mm-hmm. know, I was leaving work to come train there and then to get right back to yep. work again at 1130, where I didn't know a lot of you guys outside of the gym because sure. we were all fucking working. Yep. Yeah. We all had other things to do. We're in the gym. Yeah, it's, it's, it is that what that is. But, you know, I'll see certain interpretations or perceptions and I'm like, that's kind of not. Yeah not how it was. I mean, you, you know, him from the meets and you know, the the gym and all the other kind of stuff, maybe a little bit outside here and there, right. but not much. Cause we all 90%. Yep. We're all too busy doing other shit. You know, it was hard enough just to get in there, Yep. you know, the four days or more, you know, sometimes, yeah. but, and you couldn't miss, you know, that was the other part, you know, so that was, well, that the, was the, the, that's kind of what happened to me in a way too, as, as I got to, when you start, changing the focus or something else starts to compete with powerlifting a career Mm -hmm. you have to start balancing which is now more important you know because i can only powerlift for so long but i have to live until i'm you know let's hope to be 75 80 years old whatever the case may be so there has to be a change and a shift where your priority becomes you know your career your home life you know success or whatever the case may be versus just the sport and i don't think i never I never let the sport identify me. Like it was something that I loved to do. It was something that I focused on, but it was never my number one priority. Mm-hmm. It was it was a solid like one B, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? But it it couldn't be your sol- your first priority because your number one priority is what allowed you to do mm-hmm. it. It's what funded, you know, traveling for meets or you know equipment or whatever you were buying to use to get to where you're going. So, and that's why I say like th- this core group of people all had stable home lives, quality jobs, good families. So there wasn't the strife. We weren't the people that, you know, moved here and lived in a hotel and bounced at a Mm -hmm. strip club. Mm -hmm. Like that wasn't our group. No. And again, you're right. There was people that did that. And I'm not putting those people Mm -hmm. down. And some of them did last, but most of them didn't. Most of them didn't. Most of them, you know, came and couldn't last and ended up. Because there's no stability. Yeah. So to me, I mean, that's. That's why I had no problem being able to walk away and being able to say, I, I left what I wanted to leave out there and I'm done. So, and it, to me, it's work. I mean, you know, you look at any one of us, like, well, I know you went from Honda to your current employer, but so he's had two jobs. Mm-hmm. Us three have been with the same company for over, well, I think Joe's like 25 mm-hmm. and Chuck's a year or so more than me and I'm 31. Yeah. I was working for the same place the whole time I was there. And exactly. then this. You know, so two. So you've had uh, two. Yeah, and yeah, one so. of them you own. So, yes. yeah. Which is a different thing. Sure. You know, where there's, as you said, there's that time where you have to figure out, you know, you, that balance, right? It's, it's offset, you know, when you're competing, it's definitely offset, but there's a tipping point where it's like, you know, I'm not able to, to take care of these other things, yep. you know, because now this is not balanced where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Where, and at the end of the day, if you're one of us, your employer, really doesn't care about your powerlifting no, career. not at all. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> hey, I have to miss a morning meeting because we have to squat on Friday mornings at 8. Mm-hmm. And, and they're going to say, okay, that's great. Now you can't be promoted. So at some point you have to pick what, you know, pick your poison. Mm-hmm. Are you going to focus on what could last for, you know, 20, 30, 40 more years or what could end mm-hmm. in one meet? So now you drifted from the morning crew to the night crew to the morning crew to the night crew for years, just based off the work going from yeah. first shift yeah. to third shift. You know, I had my, some of my best times was, you know, when I worked third shift, I get off there and just drive straight to straight to the gym, you know, grab a hamburger on the way in. I think it was, and we lifted eight 30 or something mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, that was some of my better times than when I, you know, 
go into this uh, new other automotive manufacturing it i had to take a time off because we went into you know very busy time of course in the automotive it was spiking at that time and i just you know explained to louie I, I can't come i can't do this anymore you know it's and he's like well just come in on you know weekends or something like that and i'm like no you don't understand i'll be traveling i'll be in alabama canada you know yeah. indiana so it's i'll be all over the place sometimes japan so i'm just gonna take time off and that's when your business was kind of mm -hmm. taking off and i believe um I think I dropped down from like 280 something to 112. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, it was it was it was down there. He was healthy. Yeah, I see 190 something, and uh, Dave's like, "I'm gonna start benching on Sundays. Can you come in at least to spot me?" Because he asked me, and I'm like, "Hell no, I don't want to go back. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm out." You right. know, I never touched a weight since then. Never even thought about it. And uh, it was just because I felt like I wasn't healthy. Because you know, like we, Joe talked about the diet and all that other stuff. So when uh, when I did come back, Dave asked me. He says, "I'm gonna." I'm going to start benching out here. So I'm like, okay, I'll come in spot for you. And at the time I brought in my, which is my wife now, I came in and she exercised and she's over here doing push downs with like 30 more pounds than what I could do. And I'm like, all right, shit's mm. stopping now. I'm yeah. going to start training again. I can't have that, you know? And I'm like, so that's kind of what motivated me to come back. And I went, you know, I think I'd never got over 250 at that point. Mm. And, but I, but at least uh, you're taller. I, yeah, I approached it healthier. Right. You know, and, uh, and I had some health conditions and stuff like that with my digestive system. And that kind of pushed me to stay lean eating, you know, no yeah. more fat. And then, hell, I was, I ended up being stronger at a lighter body weight. I ended up making bigger, yep. bigger gains at a, like 246 is what I competed at. Yeah. yeah, it's four pounds away from 242. But, I, you know, I just wanted to do sure. better for myself. I ain't, I'm not going to the world's, you know, so I just want to set my records actually you know after i left and came back i was able to post up two more big numbers in the in the west side you know uh, the 600 pound club right. and whatever it was so it's well, it you, was you deadlifted the 600 <laughs> <Bench. laughs> oh, oh i'm sorry i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i didn't know what it must have been a you didn't you didn't clarify what <laughs> lift <laughs> i just wanted to make sure <laughs> So yeah, I just uh, actually I should not be making fun of anybody's yeah. deadlift. I apologize. <laughs> that was always a gift of mine. Was yeah. the deadlift? That was about the yeah, biggest thing that I had for the longest time. I didn't have to work at that, but we didn't deadlift, you know. Right, so, right, right. but the bench was always a weak one, and and uh, and the squat, you know, all those like the bands and chains and stuff like that helped my squat progress to at a level. It never was at a world level, but you know, mm -hmm. I can if I played my cards right, I can play second against the number one guy who was like 300 pounds more than me on a yeah. total, which was Warman. Mm -hmm. And I always had yes, to compete yeah. against him. So, and to me, he was one of the better ones, you know, and, uh, who was the, uh, the, the guy that I always idolized when I first came into it was a Pelu not Pellucci, but, uh, um, I kind of mimicked my squad after him. Passanella. Passanella. And just idolized that guy way he squatted you know mm -hmm. and chuck squatted like him as well and so i kind of just that was my idol then then it, after he passed away it kind of became you know warm and i just like being on the same platform mm -hmm. competing with him you know of course he was squatting 900 yeah. and I, I i was on the same category as on the bench but his deadlift was eight something and yeah. you know mine's like the low sevens but it was uh it was enjoyable but uh you know, one thing like what Kenny was mentioning now, the career definitely has uh, definitely dictated what your future, you know, within the sport itself. But I've came back multiple times and, mm -hmm. and attempted, uh, even though I don't have the same outlook as what these fellas have as far as like fitness. I still think as even though I perform powerlifting moments, you know, twice a week and uh, and try to do something else like bodybuilding wise midweek. Um, it, I think it really just continues to help because I tried the other avenue. I tried just doing, you know, the fitness type stuff. And with the current injuries or wherever, maybe it's just the uh, way your mechanics of your body is set. It says, no, 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 I can't do this. You must do this, you know, but just do it under control. So I've, I, you know, I've really enjoyed myself over all the years in, you know, especially with some of the people that I've trained with and, mm -hmm. and, and been around and, and through, through the years, it's, it's taught me a lot to where I've been able to help others. You know, you'd ask Chuck that same question. And I agree with what he was saying, but I understood after I left the sport and came back, there were things that I was not linking together, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, 
like you said, pushing through the bench, using your lats, squeezing your glutes. You know, these are all the things that I thought that I was doing because of just a bare, you know, just raw strength and size. But you weren't doing it and, and because right. once you really recognize that when you do perform that, the lift's totally different. You know, it's mm -hmm. absolutely totally different mechanical wise. And I've always thought myself as a very technical, you know, technique oriented type person, probably more technical than I probably should have been. But uh, it just it was able to help me, you know, continue, I think, with this sport and also help any others mm -hmm. in the future. So I've had. But, yeah, the, definitely the, uh, you know, having, you know, it's only a certain period of time, I think, that you can, in, that you, I don't want to say, I never lost interest in it because I still continue to keep doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and still continue to keep loving, um, performing the powerlifting, you know, I guess, activities or, mm -hmm. or movements and whatnot, but it's, I, I don't think that I could ever walk away. That's no, we got problem. a good balance now. I mean, we've yeah. been, I've been training with Todd for 30 fucking year i mean we still train now so it's like we tried a lot of different shit i've done some stupid shit yeah, well, where yeah. now granted five years ago we probably would have said we had the right balance too but right. you know <laughs> i think now we actually got one that we're not going to like completely destroy ourselves but still get out of it what we really want out of it and the time that you're talking about when i first called you was when i was, when I was trying to do that crawford stuff with, yeah with yeah. wendler and louis went uh, wouldn't let us do it in the gym i mean the bench shirt carryovers were just getting out of hand i mean and i wanted it you know i'm like this i can't i don't want to leave with a freaking 605 pound right. bench like i'm way you guys have seen how i'm way stronger than that 40 pound carryover right. or whatever the hell it was yeah. and um but you know it's like oh yeah louis don't do this don't do this so it's like i call him like can you come out and spot we're gonna have gym it's you know made one run and try to bench 700 which i kind of did but didn't but you know it's where the yeah long i don't know if you know this but it's louis was against this the whole time that don't do this don't do this don't do this it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work and my raw bench did go down oh yeah it, it went down definitely. a fuck ton it went down but at the meet you know he's he's sitting and i'm still training at west side on the other days you know it's, it's, he's sitting right in the front row you know and i opened at six whatever 620 mm -hmm. and it didn't touch it come up easy and he's like, I told you, I told you, this shit ain't gonna work. I told you. So then I went to 700, it didn't touch, it come right back up, you know. And I told you, I told you, I'm that like, motherfucking old man. Somebody. I touch on third, press it up, right? And then this arm gets caught underneath the, Under the, the cup, the lip. And I pressed it out of the lip. Granted, it's not a lift. I get yeah. it, it's not a lift, right? right. But in my mind, it, it, that, yes, it was. And Louis afterwards, I told you that shit ain't gonna work. I'm like, oh man, did you not, this, I, what I did is harder. It's not easier. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's actually harder, but, um, the, that kind of started with the, you know, the benching out there and at that, that I knew I was done, yeah. you know, with that meat, I knew I was done. I could, at that point I couldn't even get under a squat bar anymore. So it was like, this is my last push to see if I can actually get a carryover out of a bench shirt. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm going to be done. And then the gym moved around. Then we went out where I'm, where I'm getting into we when I went out on main line where the mm -hmm. John Deere dealership or whatever it was, you were, you were coming out, yep. you were coming out and, um, God, who else was it? Um, was it big Mike coming out? I don't remember. There that. was Teddy and, and Teddy. Molly. Teddy was there. Molly was there. It was before that. It was before that oh. because I remember us having a discussion, right? And we we're like, do we want to bring, it was like, should we bring other people out to train? And I remember us saying, well, what are the rules going to be? And I don't know who said it, but somebody said, well, let's talk about what they're not going to be. Right. And then somebody said, you don't have to be here exactly at, you know, <laughs> right. 830. It can be eight, whatever it was, was ish, like 1030 ish or right. whatever it was. And so we are looking back at, you know, what, what Louis rules were. And it's yes. like, OK, what what are the ones we're not going to have? Right. You know, you don't have to train a certain way. Yeah. And, you know, so that's when that. I think it was JL. There was, um, there's somebody on for, there's a couple of people on for you because there wasn't very many of us. I know Jim was one of them, but right. there was, there was definitely us three yeah. because I do remember it was kind of like this West side conversation, yeah. like, okay, listen, if we're going to do this, because somebody's going to have to always be there, yeah. you know, one of us would have to always be there because it was a different, somebody's got to open it, yeah. you know, you don't want to leave people stranded. And it's like, okay, how's this going to work? Sure. Well, it's only going to be on the weekends. That was the first thing. Cause we ain't doing this shit during the week yeah. and coming out and having, and then had to figure that that's where we had to figure the training out a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
like how can we structure the training so the heavy stuff is on the Saturday week, and yeah. Sunday. And during the week, you didn't have to do anything if you didn't want to. Right. That, that was a little bit of a challenge, right? Because how do you recover from that? Sure. You know, and it t- took a little bit of time. But it was, it started, you know, a little different training process where. So answer, answer your own question. Though. Like what, how did you do with the identity thing when you were done? Like, I didn't. You didn't. I didn't do, I didn't do very well at all. Yeah. No, because it's all I've done since I was 12. You know what I'm saying? So you guys started at a young age too, right? But for me, it gave me, it, it was the one thing that gave me purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, sure. I was the, the bullied kid, the beat up, the special ed kid, all this other stuff. And yeah. it's like, this thing is what made me me. Right. You know, and that's what was in my head. So then when that starts getting pulled away, you know, like, well, who is me? You know, you don't fucking know. You know, am I an entrepreneur? Like, what the fuck? What am I? Right. You know, and that that was hard. I mean, for a while it was hard, but I couldn't go. The but shoulder was a, it was a blessing and a curse, right? Because had my shoulder not, if I could still squat and you know not be replaced, I'd probably still be doing it. Right. Well, my hips took me out, but it, it that forced me to have to sit there and say, okay, this is this is a reason. You know, is it the only reason? No, but it's a big reason. I mean, could I force it and just squat like shit and just yeah, but if you do that, don't you feel like it's like the the NFL quarterback that hangs on too long, right? Like mm-hmm. at some point in time, you should just be able to walk away and be happy mm-hmm. with what you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's an interesting concept to me because I I don't know, like I don't no. I always feel like you don't have anything left to prove unless you're proving something to yourself. And like I you know I look at somebody mm-hmm. like you and. You know, you look around like you don't have shit to prove to nobody yeah. athletically, right? You went from I remember you sold the first tapes that I made with my own mm-hmm. camcorder for Louie, mm-hmm. selling them out of your garage. Yeah. Oh well, no, the reason I do the shit that I do now, like the I love to strain. I mean, he'll tell you. I fucking love to strain on a squat. I don't know. It's just something in me. I don't know. I, I'll do that for the rest of my fucking life. I just got to figure out how to do it and not destroy myself, <laughs> you know, which we're working on. We're working yeah, on yeah. And it's getting a little bit better. And it's, and it's not, I mean, I'm not blasting shit. I'm not doing things, you know sure. what I'm saying? It's all within yeah. certain constraints yeah, and, and partial you know, all this. Uh, and, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I'm not blasting shit and all this other kind of crap. It's just not necessary, you know, for that. But for me, it was just, like you said, just trying to find that purpose you know like yeah. where where like who the fuck am i but at the same time i knew you, you know because you're old enough yeah. at that point you're mature enough to be able to know okay look you know you can't what are you going to prove yeah and then the the other part and i i struggled with this one a little bit is the had i stayed you know at west side and just kept training there yeah you know for in my head i couldn't do it but i also felt like it was the wrong thing to do too mm-hmm. right but I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to be the example of what they could be. Right. Like, oh, look, here's the guy that can't fucking hold a bar. Right. You know, we, they already have one of those in there walking around as Louie, but that's right. different. You know, he, he owns it. Well, he owns it and he, yeah. he went through a lot more shit than sure. I went through. You know, so it's I didn't want to be that, you yeah. know, but at the same time, you know, it's there's a lot that we all learned that can be passed on, you know, to them that are going through there. And it's. So that was that constant battle of, well, I could still do that, but if I still did that, then again, I wouldn't be getting to work to right. the business I own right. until 1130, right. you know, this, which is fucked up. Right. You know, it's kind of why the business didn't go anywhere for 10 years. You know, how do you grow a business when you're only there half the time? You know, you're not there. It takes to, twice as long to grow the business. Especially at a time that's, you know, phones were being used, yeah. like orders are being called in and there's nobody to answer the phone. Right. And there's like three a day. You know, so if two of them came before noon, I'm fucked. I only got one a day, you know, with that. So it's, that's why I ask about that because I struggled with it for a while. But at the same time, I knew I couldn't go back. And if I did, in full transparency, I wasn't that good to begin with. Yeah. So, like, what am I going to do? Go back to suck worse? You know, I would, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I mean, I was a top 10, top 15 lifter, yeah. like right in that category. What am I going to do? Go back to be a top 40? Right. Fuck that. You know, it's not like I'm going to go back to be Tom Brady. Right. you know fucking break a world record yeah. well you know i think the reason why you bring that up it's and we're all looking at the exact same reasoning but that's that's the fundamentals that louis instilled into the gym if you can't commit then you got to go right mm-hmm. then we took that upon ourselves we, I, we know there was a point in time in our lives 
it's all of our careers. It's like we can't. We know we can't commit anymore. Right. We have to separate ourselves. Yeah. And we had a discussion with Lou. You know, I just can't. I can't do this anymore. My career's. It's. It's going to take up much more of my time. Sure. You know. Then well, when I, mean, I did. When I did have the opportunity to come back, I asked him about it, and he says, "Oh no, please, I need you to help. You know, yeah. do this." Well, I think the the other thing with, with Louis specifically, and the only thing that, and I'm not going to say he didn't understand that, but. Louis's life was Jim, the Jim right. in Westside Barbell. Right. So he had to be a hundred percent committed at all the times, which any one of us would have been if that was our career too. Sure. So when we left to pursue other careers, sometimes it wasn't quite understood, like you know whether you were quitting on the gym or you know whatever the case may be. But I mean, I, I can't even mind. I mean, I travel. I've been on the road 125 days this year. So how am I, I going to make it to a workout at eight o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday morning? Sure. I'm not going to do it. So, but I will say this, and I tell people this all the time, all of what we went through and learned in that gym is what I think the same people at this table are so successful. Sure. I believe so. I absolutely believe it. I think just, you know, perseverance, hard work, teamwork, dedication, you know, pushing through things like Chuck said, you know, you, when, it, when shit gets hard, you, you figured out how to push through it. I mean, there's been days, I'm sure, in Dave's business, you, you feel like, why am I doing this? I'm, you know, maybe I'm not going all the time at the trajectory I want, or I can't even imagine what Joe goes through on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it worth it? You know what I mean? But then you continue to push through it. And I think that's why certain people will excel in everything else they do in life, and certain people just won't because they don't find, they don't take from what we went through. For me personally, I came in 88 and I left in 03. So for those 15 years for me, what you learned, you just applied somewhere else. It was the same thing. You're just, you're chasing something different now. Mm -hmm. And and to me, yeah. that was, that's the most valuable thing I think you, I would take away from this place. I think another one was, we didn't have options. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is in, in Columbus now, there's, 25 powerlifting gyms, sure. right? So if there was somebody in the gym we didn't like or didn't get along with, we didn't have the option to say, fuck you, I'm going to go here, right? right? Or if Louie, you know, the, the, the good and bad, the, yeah. Louie's on your ass and pissing you off, you know, as he would, you know, on purpose and sometimes not on purpose, but you just, you learn to deal with it. You learned how to get along with other people, even with the ones that you didn't like, right. but actually find a way to try to still help them. Yeah. You know, to be able to get better, yep. you know, and that's a huge thing, you know, that I think everybody can learn from. Sure. You know, so we learn, you know, sometimes you got to work with people you don't like, you know, and had to, you know, or you, what you get? Just quit. Right. You know, I mean, that's, there was no other option. Right. You know, where I yeah, think that's a good point. I think that's where, you know, it's they Westside lost some of its culture over yeah. the years. Um, not, I can't, I should reframe that because I wasn't there. So right, I can't say that. So when, when people can just leave, right. You know, and say, fuck this, I don't want to deal with this. It's the smallest thing, you know, there they go. And then they don't yep. learn. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, where you had to, I mean, there were people in there that drove me fucking crazy sometimes mm -hmm. just for little, for little things too. Right. You know, it's, I, I remember the one time that you, you would remember this. It was, um, good morning or whatever it was and you know people would cheat like a motherfucker like there's good mornings and there's good mornings that are just cheating good mornings right and it's a max effort day and we're working up and these lifters in the gym that squatted 300 pounds less than me would kick i was not good at max effort stuff you know that right hanging, that's half what, good mornings yes i mean yeah. it's half what you've busted my walls about was on that day because yeah. i was not strong i was fast i wasn't strong i right. was fat I said something. I'm like, somebody ought to kill this motherfucker. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. Yeah, and then one dude followed the other dude home. And it was going to. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. One. Yeah, it was, yeah. was going to, you know, came back in the next day and said, you know, told Lou, you know, I was, I was going to kill him. <laughs> I, I swear to God, Joe, he said, I was going to kill him, but I, I couldn't do it because the blood would have got all over the walls. <laughs> then I, I, I don't know how to clean it off. The, you, you, you were there. Yep. You know, I don't know how this is a brand. I don't know how to clean it off the walls. And, you know, we're all sitting there like, the fuck is... What, what, took it literal. Like, what is going on? And he's like, then I didn't know I was going to get rid of the body. I couldn't do it like I did my dog. And we're like, your dog. You know, and it's... So Louie come in. And I'm like, man, you need to have a talk. <laughs> we, like, offloaded it. Like, man, you need to have a yep. talk with so-and-so because... Uh, 
And he's like, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, look, I just, after that, I just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're pissed off. Like somebody, I'll kill this motherfucker. And just, the dude took it literally. So Louie's answer was he bought him a bag of vitamins. Okay. You know, which was funnier and shit, you know, but that's one of those stories that will go down and, yep. you know, infamy, but it actually happened. This is the crazy ass part about this is it actually happened where at the time, you know, we're like, what the hell? But then you think about it, you're like, whoa, like this dude actually was probably more unstable than what he should have been. Easy, Roger. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's well, also the same people who have nothing else. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's kind of what I go back to. If you have nothing else in your life to focus on. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think all of us at one point was as committed to this oh. as anybody. Oh, 100 percent. You know, but it, that balance just shifts as you get farther into life. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, look at any athlete who walks off the field. I'll use football because football season's coming. And then they walk away at the right time. They become a broadcaster. Like they're still involved with the sport. They're still maintaining. But you can't be the star forever. Mm -hmm. And like the only problem I ever had, that was like a – because – we were training, I was training out at your place and I was trying to get ready for the last WPO meet. Mm -hmm. And like, I would come in and like have a great workout, four or five, 500 would feel great. And then the next week I couldn't take two and a quarter out of the bar, out of the rack. Like my shoulders were just destroyed. And I finally said, I'm done. And I went to the, to the WPO meet that year at the Arnold. And I had a bunch of people ask me like why I wasn't competing, why I wasn't competing. And I'm like, it was kind of, a, it was that. I'm telling everybody I'm done now. Right. And mm -hmm. that was the only time. Cause like you still, you were still training for that meet and now you're not there, but then it was the, that was kind of the beginning of the end. Yeah. But once I got through that one, I was perfectly fine. I think another benefit for me was with the sport and, and more so when I came to West side, it, it just compounded was, you know, you use the words all in, you know, I, I was a hundred percent, you know, with power, like 100% it where that's first, Everything else is a far distant yep. second, third, fourth, fifth. And so when I look at, say, projects and things now, and I think to myself, you know, is this something that I really want to do? And is it something do I, I don't want to be all in on anything ever because I know what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I actually I think we all kind of know exactly what that is yeah. and what that means and the negatives because there's pros associated with it. There's a fuck ton of yeah. negatives associated with it, too. Yeah. Where it, it, that's a fascinating conversation with me with the people that have been at that level, because I can I said something the other day to Todd about, you know, people that are trained, you know, that, you know, right now, the way that I train, you know, for what I do, it's like 20 yeah. percent on that all in scale yeah. of what it used yeah, to yeah. be. All right. But if there's other people that are competing and then they're telling me that they're all in. But my 20 percent is, is more than what they're doing. Granted, somebody's all in is going to be defined by what they think sure. they're all in is because it's the most they've ever been all in. But you sit there and you're like, oh, like, no, yep. man. Yeah. I know people that did some crazy shit, yeah. but not crazy to them. You know, not at the time. Yeah. But looking back. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of. Yeah, crazy I, think, shit. I think everybody that. Everyone was all in to a large degree because you gave up. There's a lot of people that gave up a lot of stuff to do what we did. Mm -hmm. But I will disagree with you. I think I think you are all in. Mm -hmm. Oh, most on I certain think things. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but you just pick something different to be all in on. Yeah, I don't know to the same level though. You give me the percentage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll name one thing and you give me the percentage if you're all in or not. Oh, I know where this is going. No, this is an honest question. Your, fam what, what, your family. Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Big difference. No, but I didn't know. Point taken. You know, it's, it, it is. Because it shifts. You know, it shifts over to that. Yeah. Because they're, that's, they're not top. You know, when yep. back then they weren't. Yep. You know, and that's, I'm asked, you know, what, what are your biggest regrets? What's the way I treated my wife during the time I was still competing? 100%. Yeah, it didn't matter who it was, everyone around you. I mean, yeah. even friend, you know, if you had other friends outside of the gym, everyone else suffered. They sacrificed. Sacrificed. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't. We Absolutely. did what we love. You know, that's what always cracks me up when people say, oh, I sacrificed this. Like, no, did you, you didn't. really? No, you didn't. You're doing what you love to do. Like, all the people around you, Yep. you know, are the ones that are sacrificing. No, I totally agree. I, I just think the, the all-in shifts to different things. Yeah. But you still have to have something that you, you're all-in and you believe wholeheartedly in. Mm -hmm. So... We just picked a different thing. What were some of the things that you took from your time there? 
that you were able to apply with what career-wise? Just a commitment. You know what I mean? Because it's if we go back to the all in, it's been, you know, my career has been pretty important mm -hmm. for the whole time. I mean, there's been, I was true to Westside. I never, never went anywhere else. I've been with my department the whole time. Never even thought of, um, you know, venturing mm -hmm. elsewhere. So just, uh, you know, just holding true. So when, when he retired, he had a little notebook. He was writing, okay, this guy, when he gets out on the street, yeah. when I see him on my drip, you know, yeah, when I get no. this guy, he's seen him on my street. No. <laughs> no, but everything is, I mean, I still work out really hard now. I mean, I have just in a, obviously a different way, you know what I mean? And I do other things and always a hundred percent. Um, but you know, before I went to West side, I was a crazy kid who was 13 years old like you. Mm -hmm. And I laid in bed every night. It's squatting. It mm -hmm. And that lasted until I left. Mm -hmm. Wait, when, when, when was your last competition? 2001. Oh, one. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I had it bad, you know what I mean? Had it yep. bad, bad for many years. Um, so it changed your life too. Oh, powerlifting. Oh yeah. Well, I but remember, I remember cause I worked second shift and Joe did too. I think when you were still before you, me and Joe used to talk on the phone all the time about like what we were going to do in the next cycle. And like, would, uh, like it would consider, even though I was working, I was fortunate. I had a job that had some flexibility and so did Joe, but we would talk on the phone on a regular basis about, if we change this, if we change that, like it was all consuming. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. Not your percentages. Yep, I had them all written out. <laughs> what we're gonna do? When we're gonna do it? And you know, we gotta do it this way. Didn't really follow it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we but all, it sounded good. And that was another thing. Like, it, some people give some guys, you know, well, he went off his own way. Well, Blue gave us a system. I mean, if you were there ten years and you didn't learn that you were a little bit different, mm. I mean, what are you truly learning? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I mean? And like he, I, I. Never really had much of a, I mean, me and Lou, I mean, mm -hmm. probably, I mean, never had any disputes. Mm -hmm. Even when I left, you know what I mean? Shook my hand. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand. You know what I mean? And I always felt as though, you know, I didn't keep in contact with him, but I mean, not a better person ever to me. From mm -hmm. the time yeah. I was a kid, I mean, think about it. He drove me across the, you know, halfway across the country to go to meet my mom's car. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to, 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 to uh, you know, if, if whenever, if I, if I ever need anything, that guy was always... Definitely. Always true to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't I don't have a single thing, and I live by his word for who knows how long, let me yeah. tell you. This is, yeah. this is what you need. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was like, that's what I need. That's what I need uh -huh. right there. I mean, that's all I hear. Yeah. yeah. You it's, don't need to stretch. Yeah. Have you ever seen a lion stretch before he attacks? <laughs> it makes sense. I've never seen a lion attack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. It made sense yeah. to it me. It made sense it, at the yeah, time. It definitely like, made sense. What the hell is he talking mm -hmm. about? But yeah, you're right. I'm all into it. Every week, it was like, this is what you need. And that was always the ongoing joke. That's but you what, needed something you need. different the next oh, week. It's always, always. always. It's always different Never the, next the week. same. That's yeah. what mm -hmm. you need. That was always, I remember saying I can't that even, for years. I wouldn't even begin to imagine how, because his mind was so just constant, constant, constant. And I don't know if that's good or bad. It was just different. Like every week. To your for, for us, it was good. Yeah, you know, true. It, it, it took some of that off of us. Sure. And you know, we didn't have to think about it. Now we still did. Yeah. But we were thinking about how we could execute what we were going to do. Yeah. He was trying to figure out how he can get, yeah. you know, change the chain. Well, and I was going to say something about what Joe said about, like, Lou gave us the foundation, right? Like, whatever this plan is. I don't know. Yeah, there's names for it now. People yeah. put a name on it and they sell it online or whatever. But I think the best thing that ever happened, and I, I always felt this way. I think Louie taught you how to train yourself. Mm -hmm. How to see or, or see other. He didn't have mm -hmm. to train everybody because we trained each yes, other. Yes, right. Yeah. Like, so once you figured out where you needed, you know, your weakness was or where mm -hmm. you needed more work. And so to Joe's point, and I got, you I mean, self-proclaimed, I got thrown out, right? So I'm not, I didn't walk away. I got thrown out. And the, but the reason I got thrown out was because of what we talked about earlier. I, I wanted to pursue something different just, and it was literally just squat and deadlift, mm -hmm. right? I never changed mm -hmm. my bench stuff because it mm -hmm. worked for me, yeah. like from the time I was like seven months old or whatever it was until... I quit. So I started training up in Cleveland with those guys. And it would, I remember him. Kenny, saying, you were still coming in and run the monolith though. Yeah, I was every Friday. Mm -hmm. And I would go, I would even go to Cleveland on Saturday morning mm -hmm. and I would come back Saturday night every, and it was literally a 12 hour day. I would leave at seven and I would mm -hmm. get home at seven. Mm -hmm. So it was a 12 hour day every Saturday driving to Minner, Ohio. And, but I remember him saying, and I understand why he said it, but he said, no one leaves here and gets stronger. Mm-hmm. 
And I was bound and determined. That, w that was not going to happen to me. And I actually made my best total once I left. Mm -hmm. So that's when I totaled 2221. At that, at that competition was at the WPO or in Columbus, right? Uh, no. You squatted 860. And yeah, you that, ended up benching like you benching 740 or 750. No, it wasn't that. I never benched that much. 730? Mm -mm. My best bench in a full meet was 716. Okay. Whatever your bench was. He was behind. Chuck was behind going into the oh, it's, going it's into the still deadlift. to this day one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my and life. And he goes out there and busts his strap on sumo, then then duct tapes it, comes back out, then goes conventional. He pulled he pulled eight sixteen to beat me. That mm -hmm. was the one chance I thought I had. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I was literally going to beat. I had, and he was, I think he had like a pec tear or some kind of little injury in the bench, so his bench yeah. was down. So that was the only way I was going to beat him. Yeah, you were and, 40 pounds or something like that on him. and he had Yeah, to, no, I was like probably up even more than that yeah. because my deadlifts is shit. So, like I said, he hates to lose more than he likes he, to yeah, win. Yeah, you, you're 100% mm -hmm. right because I was standing there watching it, and he started pulling that, and he started that bounce. Yeah. And I thought to myself, holy shit, he's going to pull that. Mm -hmm. And he did. And still to the – he had never pulled 800. He pulled 816. Mm -hmm. And he pulled that one out of some – I have no idea where he pulled it out of, but one of the most impressive things. Definitely. I was okay losing to that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, he deserves to win. Yeah. But that was the – Probably one of the best things I ever seen, or probably I seen it from the back. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> seen it from second place is what I saw it from. <laughs> I was like, "Son of a man!" I, like I thought that was the, because you don't get a, no, no, not a yeah, lot of people yeah. get to say they beat Chuck, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that I wasn't there anymore, right? So that was, and I never had animosity towards mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. I didn't. That wasn't me. Like I used other things to motivate me, but that was the one chance I thought I had. And it didn't pan out. You know, I was handling him in that meet, you know, so know. it was one of those things that, you know, it's like, oh, shit, you know, and, and of course I'm up his ass. Oh, of course. You know, no, like, I you know, know you Fucking are. Kenny, you, you know, you understand where the subtotal is right now, you know, that kind of shit. And it, but it, with you got to watch it, you know, you get him, like I was saying earlier, you get him too hot. Yep. He, it's going to be a, a mess. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he, there's a, as after he left west side and started to use gear more i think he started to figure out sure. where that balance was you know and was able to find it obviously because the lifts went well and i, I think up. and i don't think chuck did this on purpose obviously but i think everybody else loved to see him go through all that because of all the hype and the mm -hmm. you know i think i don't he like he said i don't think he knows he was doing it really no i don't yeah because he was so whacked out in his mind i don't say that you know he, mm -hmm. he was so focused but the crowds loved like yeah, I mean, oh, there, yeah. there was nothing better than I mean shit I'm over here cheering for him mm -hmm. I don't give a shit you know mm -hmm. I, I like that, that everyone and when they call the bar you know load the weight Chuck Vogelpool and the whole it, it was like at a wedding like in unison mm -hmm. they just go and everyone starts you know that's cool as shit I like, remember flying back from Japan I just got back on a Saturday or Sunday it was at Dave's one of Dave's last meets and Davey's put on some of the nicest meets and Chuck opened up on a squat, missed, second attempt, missed. Then we're like, oh, good Lord, you know, and I'm watching this, and I go back there and say something to him, and he comes out, grand. He mm -hmm. just went up, 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 put a grand on, killed it. Yeah. That was the same meet. He totaled two, two cars. You remember, you were still there, you know, because I went on a cruise for whatever fucking reason, right? Actually, before I went, Chuck totaled a car, and the police officer brought him in to squat. And we're all like, oh, this is preparation. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the cops roll up. So, Chuck gets out. We're all kind of like, you know, you know well, what the hell? What's going on? Like, the, you know, and he's, then I go on this cruise and I come back and Louie says to me, hey, did you hear Chuck rolled his car? I'm like, yeah, I'm, dude, I was, I'm, I've only been gone a week. I was hitting his, no, 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 the rental car. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? You know, he, the rental car. So, basically, two car accidents before that meet. You know, he come limping into the meet, you know, and can barely fucking walk because of other issues that were going on at the time. And it's like, I, mean, I remember saying, are you sure you want to fuck? It, it's Chuck. I mean, Chuck. temp number one, temp number two, then you're thinking, there's no damn way. He didn't come yeah, up with it. In his mind, he said, I still got one left. Yeah. He, like, I, it never, it never, I'm a head judge. He right? puts a grand on, then he's uh, walking out like Frankenstein and that, he's shaking. That's and, how it got passed. No, I was, well, head judge, right? I'm the head judge, right? Because that was one thing I did with my meets, that if it was anybody yeah, that I the, knew or if it was anybody that trained with somebody, get out of the side seat, go to the front, you know, have somebody else go sure. in. Plus, it's just, I, I had to 
give John Bott one time a red light and it, he is pissed, but you don't want to give your friends a fucking red light, you know? And I'm like, I don't ever want to do that again. Yeah, so cast, after that, yeah. I'm like, I never sitting on the side with anybody that I know. Mm -hmm. But as the head judge, you know, I got a different perception than the people that are helping Chuck and all that at the time. Sure. Cause I see him come out and just get smashed on the first one. Mm. And then, you know, whatever it was 800 or nine. And then he jumps to nine and I'm like, I can't leave. I'm a head judge. I'm like, the fuck, you know, like, yelling like Louie, like what the fuck? And he, all, all Louie, the classic Louie words, you tell him. Like yeah, anything, <laughs> anything that had to do with Chuck, it was always, you tell him, you tell, three go, words, go you tell him. I'm like, like what this. the, he's like, you tell him. <laughs> and then he missed the second one. It's like a grand. I'm like, Louie, you tell him. I'm like, I ain't fucking, I'm a head judge. I yeah. can't tell it. But he did. Yeah, I'll, tell, I'll tell him. Let's go, Chuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. You got this. Yeah, that's, I'm good. Yeah, he was notorious for, at least when I was helping him during those times, it's like, can you just fucking make an opener you know to make this a whole lot easier it'd be a lot easier if you'd make the opener a lot you know less pressure yeah a lot of times i'd like miss the first one miss the second one pull the third one out of his ass and it wasn't repeating the first one no it was always it just going kept up. going up and it's like oh, come on man and then after a while you're like it don't matter yeah. it's just how he does it yeah and it's just gonna go through as long as he gets one it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. some you're so fucking exhausted after that whole thing that's awesome but the intensity level, like you said, everybody gets into that. And oh, I, I don't. I mean, that's like. I mean, I, the way I look at it, like if you could multiply it, like you would, like a football stadium or something. Like if somehow you could compare, because it would get loud. With, mm -hmm. I mean, what's in there? Like a thousand maybe people in the WPO mm -hmm. meets, whatever you know, in the auditorium, because it was a good sized crowd. But it would get loud, mm -hmm. and then people would rush the you know rush up and they're down taking pictures, and everyone I'm like. It's pretty impressive. Remember that prison meet we went and helped at? Yes. Right, uh, right. There's, yes. I'm, there's the stories I'm not going to tell about that. But so it, after they all get done deadlift or whatever was deadlift, and Chuck get up in his jeans and pulled whatever was their last Max deadlift, deadlift. Yeah. whatever it was, just cold. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, what the fuck? That was a weird ass. That was, that was weird. That was, that was a crazy. And Lily was playing basketball with him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it, it, I only remember fragments of that thing, but it was a whole day. Yeah. And I'm like, we were in a prison yard. You know? I remember walking through the prison. The guy's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, we're going back here. You're in a prison. And I'm like, oh, I'm a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. We don't, don't worry. We have one CO with us. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we've got one. Don't worry. He yeah. had like a stick or something. We're cool. Mm -hmm. I remember that guy, that, that big bencher, he had all them gold teeth. I don't know. He had a name too. I can't remember. Well, I'm sure he has a name. They oh, all have a name. Oh, he had a name. I mean, so far, we all had names, right? Yeah. 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 That, was, that was an interesting day, right there. Yeah, that was very. How do we even do that? Does anyone remember that? What the nicknames? No, 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 no. Why would, I have no idea how this whole thing. Ha I don't know. Had to be the Chuck. Yeah, it had to be. There was something. Oh, I, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. Because he would have been working there by then. Yeah. Oh, was it at his prison? No. Hmm. No, it was up in uh, London. Was it London? Was it London we went to? Yeah. I don't know. It sure. was a terrible place. I did. I did that in Mansfield. I don't. Know, honestly, I don't. I thought it was Orient. No, it definitely wasn't Orient. One hundred percent wasn't Orient. <clears throat> I know they was yelling at us when we went by, and you, Louis was yelling back at him. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was some fucked up meets we went. Thank yeah. God, and when everybody got good enough to not have to go to those meets anymore, like the Trailer Park Nationals. Oh, yeah. that was out. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was out east, east of Columbus. Yeah. Wasn't that like where was that at? Like Cambridge or somewhere like that. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you went through like a trailer park to get. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> and that was like all the time. All the time. It was a bench meet. Well, you there had, was you had Circleville, Zanesville, mm -hmm. uh, Canton. Canton Open. That was a good meet, though, back yeah, then. Yeah, Toledo. Canton Open, yeah. Oh, what remember, I know you guys went to it. Remember doing the one on the east side of Columbus, the Police Athletic League? Oh, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. right on the east side. That mm -hmm. was always a... I was that, 14. Yeah, that was a... That Isn't was that a, where we found George? Might yeah. have been. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah. 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 I tore my peck at one of those. He was like, well, come on. All of them. I was no, I mean, the for real. That was like where I tore it for real with that surgery one. And that was because Louie, you know, you got a bench five here. And I'm like, I just oh. jumped into it. That's a crazy story because Dimmel took me there. You know, so I knew Matt really better than I knew Louie sure. when I came in. And he's like, yeah, we're going to go do this pal. Yep. Columbus police, police, or, police, police, whatever it was, bench me. I'm like, oh, I'll get the 500. He literally went through fields mm -hmm. all the way there. Not on the road, through the fields. <laughs> and, of course, I'm sitting there like, this uh, is not normal. Are we going to make it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then in the warm-up room, it's it's the warm-up room. It is what it is. You know, it's 
eyedroppers or shit. I don't even know what it is. I'm just fucking taking it's it. Safe. You know, whatever it is, I'm taking it. You know, and then, you know, the pet goes off and we're driving back and Matt's like, here, you know, take this. I'm like, go down, take it. You know, then Melina, swear to God, five minutes later, it's, you didn't just take that, did you? Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't have took that. You shouldn't have took that. Here, take this. Well, what the fuck is this? Well, this is to like combat what you just took. So then I take that. Then Matt's like, hey, buddy, here, take this. This is what you should have taken the first time. I swear to swear to God. So I, I yeah. go to, from there, from Matt's house, I leave and I go to Grant. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is, something's wrong. Yep. Like my pec is all under my nipple. Right. And Louis like, oh, you just pulled a muscle. I'm like, dude, <laughs> yeah. it's pulled all. It right off. Yeah. He's like, well, it's not, it it's, right. not, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, bruising. You know, I'm like, it's all, it, this is not right. You know, they went and admit me because they, they said, well, what have you, you know, what, uh, what medications are you on? And I'm like, well, I have no idea. Well, where do you want to start? You know, <laughs> they wrote down two of these, yeah, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> One's yeah. oval and, yeah. got a and couple so you go, you go home and you come back, you know, you come back. Go clean later. yourself Yeah. Out. So I, that was, but that was, that was one of those, but George was not that, that wasn't that one. Cause oh, this was really before. Okay. But George was raw benching something stupid yeah he, he benched was, i think i thought he benched 500 that meeting we went up and talked to him and yeah you know, or close know, to it yeah he was strong and he said he was doing like tens with 405 yeah. and we're like what you know yeah that's what i do i do tens, yeah, he tens was super, on everything he was super strong right away and arnold coleman arnold, oh arnold, arnold yeah. coleman was yeah. strong unreal mm -hmm. like he was i remember like he was 190 pounds he was or, crazy he was strong he still looks good now yeah and hey what, how old is he i don't know He's a little older than we are. Yeah. Yeah, he looks – I've seen him on a couple of posts from here and there, but looks good. One of the funny things that I still look back on that cracks me up is because you guys are not associated with the industry at all, right? Mm -hmm. You're just powerlifting, competing, whatever it is. And Louie would have these coaches come in, right? And one time he had one that comes in that was world-renowned, whatever. And nobody fucking knows, like I do. But nobody else knows. Louie don't even know, right? And – you weren't in there, but you, I don't even know if you were there at the time, it, but you were relentless on this fucking dude because he just sat. You know, it was a, a dimmer. It was, and it's not that far away from the bench to the... Yeah, like six feet. Wherever the glute ham raise. It wasn't a glute ham raise. Whatever was there, like the cab machine or whatever it was. Yeah. He just sat there. So we start warming up doing um, reverse band. I don't know what it was. Every set, Kenny's like tapping the dude. I'm like, hey, you're, you're, you're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You can take this. Oh, 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 you're just going to wait until we go 135. I get it. Some people just wait to 135. Every fucking set. You probably don't even remember, I remember this. Yep. You remember this? Remember. Yep. And all the way up to like, oh, okay, dude, you're just going to start with 315. I don't, hey, we don't do that shit here. That You do that, you get hurt, you know. But right. hey, man, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. And then after, obviously, you're the last one to finish. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. You're waiting to beat me. Here you go. It's just relentless as hell. <laughs> relentless as hell and um the funny thing later you know the the a year and a half whatever later the guy writes about his trip to west side and how you know it was nothing 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 like the real he didn't say a word the whole time mm -hmm. nothing yeah. he didn't even go to lunch after and then just nothing you know and the one time remember when mel Siff would come out that was that was a yeah. funny one because he came out one time and he had this suitcase had peas in it, right? There was something like canned vegetables were in this thing. And he would come in and he, he, was, his, he, he was so confused because he studied Russian weightlifters and they respect the bar. You know, you never step over a bar, you walk around a bar and we're just throwing shit. <laughs> you know how we are, you're just yeah. like, you know, just he, he was having an anxiety attack. So he was hiding behind the belt squat, eating these fucking peas, you know, and shit like that. And what, and afterwards, listening to him talk to Louie, you know, at lunch was funnier than hell. Like, how are these guys like, like how you're, and Louie's like, listen, you know, Louie, he's yeah. trying to explain it in however way he's trying to explain it. And I'm just dying because it was so, this guy was freaking the fuck out about it. It was crazy as hell. That was something that actually did eventually, in my opinion, got a little bit irritating when no, the was. place was so small. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I understand why people wanted to come. I understand why Louis wanted them to come or, mm -hmm. you know, allowed them in. But after a while, it just was so confined. You you know, if someone brought three people, the place was bumper yeah. to bumper. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. even move. And there's nowhere. It's almost like you need a place this size with like yeah. a little bleacher for them mm -hmm. to to watch yeah, or, I mean, yeah, and, or and, train yeah. with us. Don't just stand there and like take notes. Yeah. And your defense of that story, that was not the first, like you said, that was not the first time. Oh no. I mean, it was a lot to where, you know, we were all super nice with everybody. Yep. 
you know, for then after a while, it's like. Then the wor the worst one was you know it, it uh, got Arnold, Class Arnold Classic weekend. All yes, there would be twenty extra people in there, and you're like, we it only fits fourteen. Yeah, like we're already packed. If the fire inspector comes, we're going to jail. Mm -hmm. Like it was so packed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I understand it. It was just, I don't know. It, no, it, I get where you're coming from because I mean, we were telling Louie, you know, look, you know, this is the fucking annoying, right? You know, then Louie start blaming it on me. Yeah. You know, oh no, they, they, Dave's coach is coming out. I'm like, no, no, no they ain't, this ain't me. You know, this, I'm not bringing these fucking people out. You know, and it was, but it was, but some of them would come out and train though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were okay. But that was rare. Yeah. You know, most of them come out, they wouldn't even train. And Louie would be like, you know, afterwards, like, I don't understand these coaches. You know, they, they don't even fucking train. And, and so, of course, we're all like, fuck all these coaches. They don't even train. You know, so that didn't help either. No. No, but I understand, like, the logic for them to be there to learn or whatever. We just didn't have the space for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, you know, I mean, I can understand why they don't get into a squat set with Chuck. I mean, that, mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you don't have to be a, mm -hmm. a genius to figure that out. But, I mean, at least participate until you fall out. Mm -hmm. Like, understand what, how we do the movement or why we do the movement or whatever the case may be. But that's what built it up for him. He probably didn't know he was building it up. You know what I mean? The, the West Side. But all those people coming in, he was trying to help them, mm -hmm. genuinely help them. Oh, yeah. But all that was doing was growing. I don't think any of us growing. knew. I really growing. don't. No. You know, because yeah. it's. He, I he didn't know either. No. He nope. was just trying to be helpful. No, because I remember when I started selling the VH8 tapes for him. I never watched them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and, I, and I'm watching them. The, the first ones was like Todd was in it, and I think you were in it, and Chuck. Is that right? We all had mullets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and it's like, I didn't know they ever, I mean, it was at the bingo hall. Yep. You know, that's place. where we made the first one. Yeah. And I'm like, but people were buying the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that's when I started thinking, oh, wait, wait a minute. You know, people kind of know, like, more than... We just think that they just, you know, we're known in Columbus. I, I knew right away after coming here and when I started to just find any job because I'm working for Audia Temporary Service. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'll go to a, when I started going to try to bounce, I learned really quick, you know, that West Side's kind of known, yeah. at least then right. was was known in Columbus. I'm like, well, maybe bouncing isn't exactly what I should be doing. Sure. You know, from all this. But I had no idea, you know, the the reach, you know, after that until. And I don't think you guys had any idea. No concept. You know, you know, but I do remember when he would make those other videos. You know, it's the the big ass camera. Like he'd bring in that big ass camera. Then he'd film a bench session or squat session, whatever it was. I had to go home, then I'd watch it. And there had to be no profanity, right? Because the editors went. Ha there were so many times that he filmed it. And I'm like, Lou, we can't use this. Mm -hmm. We can't use this. And the, the, I remember the one that he did do, there was, I had to tape. Uh, things all over, like don't curse and all this, and we get almost all the way through it. Like, somebody, motherfuckers, we'd start working up at the end and be like, son of a bitch. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, we can just trim that. Right. We can cut that out. You know, that that was good. But there was one time that we fucked up, I fucked up, or what, who, it would be whoever's supposed to hit record did it backwards. Oh. You know, so it didn't record anything that was supposed to record, but recorded everything that you, you weren't, weren't supposed, supposed to. to. Like just the, the, all the camera was doing was pointing out the door, right? That was it. But listening to this fucking thing oh. was unbelievable, you know, because it was after training. We were just sitting around fucking around. Was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It, it, it is kind of interesting to think about, you know, and I know people have said it before, what come from those 800 square feet and how it had global reach. Like it's cool to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, definitely. I mean, like yeah. to me, that's, that's a, a cool concept just to be, I mean, you had a hand in it, mm -hmm. but you were actually just, just to belong to it and be a part of it was, was yeah. pretty special. What I've been trying to figure out with, you know, podcast this year, cause some of the other guys are coming out that I don't, I don't, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, they're different. Like what, what continued? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what, what culture wise continued with training wise, you know, what continued, what, changed what didn't change because the lifters got better you know they, they the more world records you know bigger yeah. lifts so obviously he learned you know from our mistakes his mistakes then applied those and trying to figure out culturally you know what stayed what didn't stay yeah it's it's a little disconnected you know it's, sure. it's but a lot of that the camaraderie you know for certain groups stayed but yeah. i don't think it was the same you know, is what we had. Right. You know, it's... Yeah, I think it would be hard to replicate what we had. I think it was... 
because that was a long period of time in the same group of people. Yeah. Like you just don't, you don't get that commitment from people today. No, it was a, that's the thing. It was like I said, there was a lot of times to where it was four. Yeah. It was like, what, what the hell? You know, then there'd be another 15. Yep. You know, and then right back to four, mm -hmm. then, you know, come back up. But even the ones that did come in and stick, you know, for that time, it wasn't just for like a year. Yeah. You know, they were staying for a while. Sure. You know, with the whole thing, which is, I don't know if it'd ever be, now I don't know if it'd ever be duplicated again. You know, because the, the, like I said, there's too many choices. There's all the other yep. kind of stuff. Because the one skill that Louie had that I think goes unnoticed is he had an ability to make everybody be better no matter who they were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, he found whatever you needed to either piss you off or to motivate you to be the best that you mm -hmm. could be. And for some of that, some of us, it was just finding a way to piss them off. You know, for other ones, it was finding a way to just build them up you know, whatever it was. And I mean, you got to think about it. You got an 800 square foot or whatever it was, 600 square foot gym. It was and 20 by 40. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to take what was known at the time as the best lifters in the world, pop them in a gym in a highly anabolic, you know, anabolic environment, high testosterone environment yeah. and make them get along. You know, not yeah. only that, but make them help each other get yeah. better. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a skill. Mm hmm and that's a huge fucking skill. Yeah, that I can't remember what the there's a quote that says something about that. And that that's like a skill of a leader, not the skill of a boss. Mm -hmm. It's to be able to to morph people into a team. Mm -hmm. Because I, I still to this day, and I've said this many times, powerlifting is a one man sport, right? When mm -hmm. you're on the platform, but I think it's the epitome of a team sport. Because it takes more than just you to get you to that point. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things we all had to learn was the role that you played at any given time. Mm -hmm. You know, on deadlift day, I played role of weight changer. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I played. That was mm -hmm. my job. You know, like you're first because you're going to be out after like 505 mm -hmm. and then you change weights for people. And then the next day, you know, if it was a bench day, then you got to play, you know, your role at the top with the, the other top guys. And I think... Everyone understood that and everyone took their role and they used it and they got better because mm -hmm. you're always you're you're always chasing the guy above you. Mm -hmm. Right. And everyone's pushing you to chase that guy and that guy's trying to run away from it. Mm -hmm. But it took every single person. And but you think about it when we went to meet. Now, if you include the, you know, the evening guys that train, we would walk into meets with 20 and 25 people mm -hmm. like that's the epitome of a team, mm -hmm. even though we all weren't training together. You were still collectively a team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Lou, to your point about using, you know, the skill to drive you, you know, he would, I know I personally was, I'm going to call it a victim. That's not the right word, but he would make shit up mm -hmm. and tell me what George was doing at night. Oh, yeah. And then he would do that. I'm sure he did the same thing to George, mm -hmm. you know, and tell him that I'm doing something and probably didn't do any of it. Mm -hmm. But he's just using that for constant, you know, mm -hmm. motivation or whatever the case may be, you know, to, to get you to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But I, I still think that's, that's a huge part of why we were successful is the entire team concept and camaraderie to be able to train. You had an obligation and accountability to show up Yeah. on you know, by eight 30 or whatever the time was back then. I don't remember what time it was, but, and you got shit if you were late. Yeah. And remember yeah. they, you wouldn't, they wouldn't take the bar back down for you. No. Mm -mm. If you were late, you got in wherever the bar was. You're like, Gee. It'd, mm -hmm. be a, it'd be a quick day. <laughs> Rob, Rob jumps in at 4.55 yeah. or whatever it was. Does, how many sets you guys done so far? Okay. Yeah, it's just, I caught up. Let's go. Now, he did. He come in the one day, and it was oh, the 405 for eight sets of two, whatever it was. He just did 16 and left. Yep. I'm like, well, I guess that's fucking one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys Sunday. Yeah. Well, he was a lot like Joe, where he would do the, the one main thing, and then where'd he go? Yep. Like, he's done. And, you know, it's it worked. You know, for we him. should have, we should have learned from that though, too, because yep. we'd stay there and do tons and tons of shit that we probably didn't need to do. Yeah. You yeah. Know he that. was, he was freakishly strong and gifted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, that's why I said, I think we've had a lot of people that were really, really good at, you know, one or two things, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe mediocre at something else, mm -hmm. but he was like significantly good at all three. Mm -hmm. He totaled elite in his first meeting, you know, what lift was first. <laughs> Remember that? That's great. Yeah, he had. A, he actually asked the. You know how they do the rules meeting. He he, he fucking asked 
what lift he's like you've never been so embarrassed in my life you know who was gonna you know it's like who's gonna ask that but he asked that and it's like there she goes and told us to leave you know it's like geez yeah <laughs> and that was probably after what like maybe eight weeks of training with us or something mm-hmm. i don't know how long he was there yeah. before he did his first meet but he, mm-hmm. i mean he was strong when he came through the door but he mm-hmm. got like top level strong mm-hmm. quick yeah in my weight class, in you know, your just, weight class like, yeah. another fucking bust in the head you know, you're busting yeah. your ball to get your balls mm-hmm. to get better. Then sh- boom, like whoa, fuck, you know. Then Stafford, boom, like son of a bitch, this sucks. Yep. You know, you're just doing all you can do. The other thing, though, with what you're saying is with with the group aspect, is we w- I I learned the best squat cues from him and Chuck. Mm-hmm. You know, those two because we we're always watching that. Yes, we're fucking with people, giving them shit, but if something's off. You know, it'd be, you know, listen, do this. Mm-hmm. You know, it was always the bench from you. You know, it's like, look, man, your wrist is fucked. Do this. We are always helping each other with those little oh, yeah. things, you know, and those little things make a big difference. Well, that's man. that's kind of what I meant about, like, everyone was a coach. Yes. Once you figured it out, you had to learn it yourself. Mm-hmm. And you learned what to watch for or what someone, you could see what someone was actually doing wrong better than mm-hmm. you could see it on yourself, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you, you didn't have Louie as a coach. You had five or six other people coaching mm-hmm. That would, and if you kind of pulled them at the same time, they probably all saw the same thing. That's yeah. how in tune people were. But they'd have different like ways to say it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Where oh, totally. It, maybe we're, maybe you were trying to tell, or you were trying to tell me, but he would tell me one way. Sure. You know, like here's what you do with your belt. You know, your app, right. whatever it was. And it's like, oh shit, that was way easier. Yeah. You know, it's like yep. how did I not know that in the last eight years? <laughs> it's like a hack. You know, it's like wait a minute, <laughs> like how did I not know this? You, like, fi- you figured it out in year ten. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And, and, I mean, yeah, the venture became a whole nother yeah. animal because that was a whole fucking different. That's great, isn't it? Like, you yeah. guys won't believe what I just figured out and you're like. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like I'm, I'm on my last leg and I just realized now you're supposed to so, squeeze so the bar. You, so if I push on my belt, this actually gets easier? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's the um, the venture, it's like I said, changed over time where I remember trying to put you in a poly. Oh, that was terrible. No, that was not good. No, I was, remember I was dying in those things. Oh, oh was my terrible. God. Oh. He, I, he was claustrophobic. I was claustrophobic as oh, shit. I just remember couldn't get. We were stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I could not breathe. I used to, because I used to love having Bob Co help me because he was big and tall, and we had to do like a whole countdown and a breath and like I, I, you had a split <laughs> second to get that thing over my head or else. I mean, I didn't have a neck. I didn't have nothing. You know, like it was just like a big pumpkin <laughs> sitting on my shoulder. You think? And, <laughs> and as long as he could get my head through where I could actually like suck air, I was cool. But it was just. <sighs> Yeah. That take, it off, take it off, take it off. I'm probably taking more off than I put on. <laughs> like, And then when they finally got that whole open back shirt, I was like, okay, this is the ticket. Like, It, it wasn't about mm-hmm. the shirt being better for me. It was about, I don't have to like worry about my head going through this mm-hmm. thing. That was kind of crazy if you think, because I remember when uh, Vanessa's shirt blew out at that one meet, and she benched a big PR. Yep. And we're like, oh, my God, she did that, and her shirt was – I mean, to us it was like more impressive yeah. because she did it and her shirt was blown out. Yep. And then you find out later, oh, put shit. You, put you in a way better group. It makes you way better. Yeah, you're not you're fighting like, the shirt. So who was the guy who figured, what was the guy that worked on all of Chuck's cars? Sonny? Sonny. Wasn't Sonny the first one who don't mess with that and he been something yeah, stupid? Yeah, he might have been the first one in Westside. Mm-hmm. But I, if I recall, I, this might be given credit again. I think, didn't Jesse kill him? We were somewhere and there was a guy that had his shirt cut open in the back and like he was struggling in the warm up room with like, I'm going to call it like 365 or something. And it was hard, four or five, maybe whatever roll. And goes out and benches like over 600 pounds. Yeah. And I don't, I don't remember who it was, but it's like, how did that just happen? Like, then you started seeing people get, mm-hmm. you know, some decent carryovers from, I never got those huge carryovers. Well, it's because I think what I figured out was like my last meet, 198, I tried like 635, but I couldn't get a touch chest. Mm-hmm. It went up like, burp. Well, mm-hmm. now you just keep going up, right? You just, right. Mm-hmm. You just keep going up. It's going to go up if yeah. you touch your chest. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that was a ticket. Because I remember I went from like 585, I did 633. And they were like, mm-hmm. yeah, what was your up. best bench roll? 530. 530. 1, 190. That was my. I mean, I and went, your best bench with a shirt? On file, I think 565 with multiple 600s. Huge carryover. Mm-hmm. You know no, I mean, I mean like, like my best was like 540 and like 605. It's crazy. I just couldn't fucking figure it out. It wasn't for a lack. We could have used it more, but yep. again, it wasn't for a lack of trying. I mean, you go in there and it'd be like, this sucks. I mean, it's, it's hard to figure out when to put it in. Yep. Because it was so wrecking on your system. Yep. You know, to even put it on and then trying to get the 
damn thing to come down yep. is a bitch too. Or know that it's not, you know that it's going to not last. Right. The neck's going to blow out. The shoulder. Oh, I can't even. Out. How many? And we went through. I had to go through a hundred of them. But yeah, just. But what, even when when the shirt. When the back got open on the shirt, I feel like the blowouts went down also. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it wasn't push, putting stress on the shirt and like wrong seams or whatever, the, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that's when I feel like, because I even got to the point where I had multiple shirts. I had a shirt for an opener, a second attempt, a third attempt, and and then maybe a fourth if things go really well. Because like, mm-hmm. you started dialing them in. But that's like what Chuck was saying. If you would have known that oh. way yeah. before... Well, you guys started young enough too. That did you have your squat suits blow out in the ass? I was yeah, always I, the poly ends, or I don't think I ever yeah. had a squat suit. Yeah. I, I had I had one or two blow out. Yeah, because I remember that coming up. Yeah. you're worried about the because that sucked too. The strap, yeah. I remember the strap blowing. But, and that was even before because even squat briefs weren't a big thing Mm-mm. way back when. That wasn't a big. I didn't even know there was fucking double ply until I came to West. Yeah. I swear to God, like Louis, like what is this shit? And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, you, you can get double ply. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what? No, no, no. You just call France. That's all, all my best lists were done in double ply. Yeah. I never. Yeah, yeah I, I had no idea. I, I had no clue. Because yeah. it wasn't advertised. Right. You know, you call, I'm like, oh, shit, this is legal? Like, hell yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, give me, I, I yeah. want that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, then you start, then you realize, well, that ain't as easy as just putting it on either. Yeah. You know, the double ply bench shirt yeah. before it was denim was a, not even worth it. Yeah. It was not worth it. I'd just rather just do it raw. You know, then the, the bench shirts that were not cut in the back, you right. know, the, those suck too. Oh, the those were terrible. I actually was watching a video when I, when I benched 712 in Texas. That was in a closed back shirt. And it was like, I look back at it and you're like, God, that form was terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, because it would like kind of handcuff you. Like, I don't know how I even made it. to be. Oh, honest. yeah. You always dropped it off. Yeah. And then you kind of had to like pull it back and then put it into the groove. You're just like, ugh. Now that when they cut it open, everything just kind of, mm-hmm. like, it was made to be there. Mm-hmm. But that's when everything, I think you, less injuries, at least for me. Yeah. I think, I think that's where we fell a little bit behind the curve, right? For sure. Because for, for a long time, you could train with, I think it actually was beneficial to not train with it. Mm-hmm. You know, because you build that raw strength yeah. up, then you put it on. Oh, you're not getting much. You know, out of the wraps in a squat suit, what, maybe 80 pounds, sure. 100, maybe, you know, but then the shit got way better. You know, we didn't change, you know, that, what we were doing. That's actually funny you mentioned that because one of the things that I, I felt like I got really good at because I didn't squat super wide like you guys did, mm-hmm. but learning how to use knee wraps as a rebound. Mm-hmm. So when I was training in Cleveland, because we put them on all the time mm-hmm. and I would actually start wrapping my knees, even though it wasn't super tight at like 405 to get used to the to learn how to use mm-hmm. them as a rebound because I did squat. I don't want to call it narrow, but I didn't squat like, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't have long legs either. Yeah. So yeah. It's all relative, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the equipment was a huge thing though. I think that's why I don't, I'm not involved anymore, but that's why I like the sport to me today is totally, it's not what we did as right. powerlifting. It's different. It's, it's definitely just different. totally different and it's fine. Yeah. You know, but that's why I don't think you can compare a today number versus a, you know, 2000 number. Yeah. I mean, I was only gone. I was only out of the sport five years, and you know, at the at the best time, that my best, I think I was eight in the nation in my weight class. And when I came back, that number dropped down to like yeah, 30, 40 yeah. something, you know. And it was like, you know, all the squats were in the not high nines, and the benches were close to the sevens, and, and the deadlift always stayed in the low sevens, mid sevens, that type of thing. But yeah, that total went way down. And of course, at that point in time, the the bench shirts change. Sure. You got the canvas suits, you know. Of yeah. course, there was still nothing for the deadlifts. So yeah. Other than just yeah, because yeah, that's I more that's more of a raw strength lift. Yeah. Yeah, that's I. I don't know. I don't know if I would have even liked what they do today, to be honest with you. Uh, but still, I, I give them credit because one that one day a couple months ago I went back to that west side and looking at the the board and the numbers. Mm-hmm. Someone still had to get underneath. Yeah, you. That's mm-hmm. a good yeah, point. Oh, yeah. No, 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 they I, did. No, so, no, no, a hundred percent. I'm telling you right now. I mean. The, those 181, like Phil yeah. Coker or whatever, mm-hmm. all his numbers. I'm like, I don't care what anyone Press. says. Very mm-hmm. Any squat suit, whatever, that dude got under those weights, mm-hmm. under that bench. Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. point. That's I true. mean, how headstrong does he, do you have to be to bench whatever, 900,000? If yeah. that thing goes, oops, you're yeah. done. 
Yeah, I think you got to do it to respect it, you yeah. know, in, in that regard. I respect every number on yeah. that board. Those yeah. guys are, your spine and your joints are still holding that Those guys that are out of their mind when yeah. I look at those numbers. Definitely. Crazy stuff. I give them all the respect in the world. One of the frustrating things for me being part of the industry back then, you know, because it's, I started building the business towards my back end, you know, of the, I had it, but it was just the seminar, just a stupid right. little shit like that, but towards the back end. And I mean, I don't even want to say the internet wasn't the internet, but it wasn't, you know, so when it started to come on, you know, the, the shit about, you know, West side and West side training, and it only works for gear, you know, back then it's like, we don't wear it. Right. You know, it was so frustrating to me. Cause it's like, you know, dude, you don't understand. We, we, we're wearing groove briefs that are like single ply pieces of shit. No knee wraps. And if, I wish we did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I wish we did. We're putting the shit on. Like, all this is raw training. Like, there's, we're not using wraps. Right. Our wrist wraps were cut knee wraps. Yep. Yeah. You know, your old shitty knee wraps. And that's what that was. I didn't have a bag. I tied my knee wraps around, around belt. my belt. Yeah. And my elbow sleeves were on there. That was my bag. You used to get shit for wearing those elbow sleeves. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I nobody sleeves. else wore them. Yep all kinds of shit yeah, for apple sleeves that did nothing <laughs> yep you know and they probably true. didn't help me either right, you know right. but anyhow the uh, but that was so fucking frustrating because oh no this shit don't work this shit don't work i can't work for raw and all that i'm like what the hell are you talking about everyone was wrong we all were i'm like you you're missing the whole concept here yeah you know fucking kenny was board pressing 987 or whatever <laughs> the hell it was <laughs> you know it was ridiculous you know you and rob I, those days frustrated the shit out of me too by the way you know because we're you know you work up and your last man it's got to suck for you because you got to follow yourself after a while yeah. but we'd all be out you know rob still be going up like yeah. five six jumps like what i was i was fuck? actually i was super grateful that rob came in mm -hmm. because to your point and he he would run with you yep. you know so you actually had someone that was within a hundred pounds oh yeah i mean you were two plates ahead oh, oh yeah you know e easily every bit of it yeah yes. easily and that overhead shit you were way more than that ahead. <laughs> yeah you know, I'm like struggling to do 185, but hopefully I can do two and a quarter. You got like 10 fucking plates yeah. aside or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a couple of things that I was strong at. And then with him, it was the fucking, the box squat drove me fucking, that high box squat pissed me off like you can't believe, Joe. You have no idea. Well, I just keep going back to Straight as an arrow, too. Straight, perfect, mm -hmm. up and down. Mm -hmm. and that was yep. just by, that's just the way it happened. Yeah. Because you carried the bar kind of high on your neck, too. But I couldn't bend over. I couldn't, yeah, that, I couldn't do a good morning with 185. I know. It's like I'm hoping for the good morning day. <laughs> Dave's like, let's do good morning. Like good mornings. No. Like good mornings. Good mornings, you know? No. But I put that back on there and keep my back straight. As long as my back didn't crack, I could do anything. Hmm. The, the other thing people don't believe when I'll say it is, like with the max effort exercise, like they'll they program it all out. And stuff. I'm like, man, we didn't know what we were going to do until we got in there. Uh, well, Ever. I, I get that question quite a bit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how did you guys rotate? I'm like... <laughs> What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> no disrespect, but I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. we did, you know, and it depend on the max effort day. If you came in, it was, you know, Monday. Mm -hmm. Typically, Chuck or somebody like that got to pick what mm -hmm. you were doing. Yeah. Like, I didn't come in on debit day and say, this is what we're doing. So was, <laughs> like, shut up. You're out of here, you know. Come back tomorrow. Come back on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But th there was no rhyme or reason as to. And then I think there was also. They thought everyone would always do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it, for the most part, it was. But there mm -hmm. was people would kind of separate and yeah. do some different things. So mm -hmm. you Especially start, after the first movement for right. 100%. Yeah. You would start focusing more on what you needed versus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I get that question quite a bit, actually. Like, how did you guys, you know, what was your circuits like or your rotations? Yeah. I'm like. That you found out at 830 that morning what your rotation was. If that. I mean, yeah. it's because the story I'll tell is I'd come in and say you're in there and you're in there and be like, hey, what are you guys, wanna, what are you guys doing today? I don't know. What do you want to fucking do? I don't know. What do you want? I mean, this went, went on. Yeah. You know, until somebody finally came in and they'd say, I want to do this. And we'd say, OK, we're doing the opposite. Yeah. Or somebody would come in and say, I don't give a fuck what we do. Let's just do it. Just let's not do right. this. Well, you dumbass. That's what we're That's doing. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> and good mornings. I yeah. Do oh, I hated them. We're going to do good mornings. Those were so fucking worthless for me. The hanging good mornings. I hated oh, those. Oh, the hanging ones in the chains? Yeah. yeah. It, um, my best was 455 when I squatted 820. My best when I squatted 930 or whatever it was. 450. It went fucking nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. And I'm trying to tell Louie, obviously this doesn't work for me. Right. He's like, well, it's a tester. That's I'm what like, what mean? the fuck do you mean it's a tester? What the hell was that? 
Yeah, he said, he said, well, if you can't do 455, then you know your strength's off. Yeah. I'm like, well, no, <laughs> come on. It's it's kind of, just, that's kind of like reverse psychology. Yeah, and I'm trying right to there, yeah. cheat like the motherfucker. Like, swing can I it? swing that yep. shit and catch it right? Somehow I'm going to have to get more than 455. <laughs> you know, then Louie to get in there and just, you know, granted, he's not bending over. Yeah, he's, he's already in a. Yeah, it's one of those me things, too. too right? You know, you, you too. You get under there yeah. and fucking squat it up. Not one of those things. It is what it is. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. That's why I like the deadlift when it was yeah. our, it went for, for you. So you kill it on the good morning, come the deadlift. It's like, ah. Uh, got, got him. <laughs> you got me quick, too. I, got, I was out early. Mm -hmm. I actually can pull, because I've been pulling a little bit more lately. I actually can pull better elevated. When uh, standing on a box? Me standing on yeah, a box. I always could. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, I feel better. Like, I get a better contraction and out of the box. Yeah, for me, I could use my quads more. Which to Louis, that was my problem when I came in. Your right. quads are too big. Your yeah. quads are too big. Your quads are too big. So anytime we pulled on a deficit, I could squat it up. Right. Oh, you know, I like that. You know, you put me flat on the floor. Put me on a pin one. I'm fucked. Yeah. Mm. You know, there ain't shit happening there. I pulled fifty pounds, sixty pounds less on pin one than I could off the floor. Then you got Chuck who come in and pulled twelve hundred pounds out of the pin. Mm -hmm. He was always strong with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, he's, I think he must have like rebar. In his back or something. <laughs> Actually, he has rebar in his back. He does oh, now. He does now. Yeah, yeah. He does now. Courtesy of the doctor, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm That's awesome. So what's, let me ask you this. Of all, so, of all the years in powerlifting, like, what's probably the most impressive thing you've ever seen? I, it, to me, it still falls back on Gog and squatting 1,100 pounds. I just watched that the other day. I was mm -hmm. talking about that last night. And it, it wasn't just that lift. It was how it happened. Yep. You know, because it was in the WPO and everybody was standing on fucking chairs. Yep. You know, it was it was the, to me like the epitome of anything I would ever want to have happen yep. if I was lifting. Sure. You know, it's anytime anybody's standing up, it's a big, it's it, a big they, they weren't standing up for my shit. Right. Maybe for your bench, <laughs> but they weren't standing up for my shit. But when you get everybody right. and the place is packed yep. and it was a packed ass room and he he's. Barely made that motherfucker. I mean, it kept moving. Yep. It, it, in real life, it seemed like it took a half an hour oh, yeah. to come up. That yeah, I think he actually just impressive. posted that the other day because I came across of it. I was yeah. That, and I saw that and I watched it about nine times. And it, that's probably one of the most impressive things. And I, while it's not a, the most, the highest lift when Chuck pulled 816. That was a big one too. But see, I was by, I was hell, I was not there. I can't see it. I'm helping yeah. him. I'm behind it. Yeah. Ju just like watching it happen and, Knowing he's never pulled 800, you know, it's like, I don't know, it was pretty, it was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, what was his best part of that? Like, I want to say it was like, it was high, very, very high seven. 760? No, no, it was above that, I think. Was it? Yeah, maybe like a 788 or something like that. But it was, it was big, but he pulled a huge PR to win. I was like, and it's not like, what he, year was that? Not ever tried. Had to be like 2001 or two. Because I remember when he was 242, he had to pull 820, 830 to beat that Curtis Leslie in mm. Chicago. Remember he got it almost all the way Yeah, up? we were 220s at the time, though. When he beat me, we were 220s. Yeah. So his best pull at 220 wasn't... Because he had never oh, pulled... Oh, okay, okay. I'm thinking what... Yeah, so he was 242... When he beat back, Leslie. Way back in the day. Yes, that was back in the night earlier, or like mid to 96, 97, 98. That was a crazy list. Yeah. That was a huge PR, whatever, day 30, 8, yeah. 40. That was a good one. What world record do you remember the most of your First own? one. Yeah? By far. How so? I mean, like, what was going through your head after you did it? I don't know. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just remember, yeah, I just remember Chuck, or I'm sorry, um, Louie, coming, jumping over the bench and on top of me. Mm -hmm. But it, it, and. Joe was there, Esco was there, Bob Coe was there. I can't remember who, there was a couple other people. And we had went to Texas for that Inzer sponsored greatest bench in America. George was there, but he, George kind of got shafted because he didn't get to compete in our flight because I think mm -hmm. his previous lift maybe wasn't as high or something. So he was in the crowd. But that was, that bench was like Goggins' squat. It took forever. Mm -hmm. Like it, it just it never came backwards. It just constantly motored, and then finally, when it was locked out, I actually felt like okay, I can't push it any far. Hopefully, they put it back in the rack. And when they took it, it was just like that was because everyone everyone there with typical powerlifting meets. They always talk about what they're going to do the night before, mm -hmm. 
And so everyone's talking about their crazy numbers. And if I do this, I'm going to hit this. I didn't really say nothing because I was, at the time I hadn't really, I'd never been 700. So I didn't really have a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up winning the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so f- for me, that was kind of, I guess you put you on the map, so to speak, right? It made you relevant. And then it wasn't that much longer when I've been 728 in Chicago at the Navy Pier. It took off. I mean, you went on a roll. You know, like I was telling you earlier, I remember Louie coming in because those are all meets that yeah. were just bench meets that mm-hmm. not everybody was going to. Yeah. And it was like every time it's like, holy shit, you know, what is going on? It's just... But then I got like, I, you're, you're right. It just went like this and then it went like this. Mm-hmm. And then Joe's like, you need a new challenge. Yeah. And like, and it, the funny thing was I didn't really change anything. Like other than not force feeding myself. And I think I dropped 20 pounds like mm-hmm. almost instantly. And I broke the world record in the 42 is the first time I competed at 42. Mm-hmm. And then and then my body weight just kind of started naturally. And I eased into where I was about 235-ish. And then I started making 220s. And then I ended up benching 716 at 220 in a full meet. Mm-hmm. That was – but I think the first one's always um, – Yeah. The lift I remember the most is when I squatted 930 and Todd was behind me because I remember when I took it out, I didn't shake. Yeah, he didn't. Right? And all I remember him saying is something like, oh, my God. You know, it was something like that. Like, he was startled that I wasn't shaking. And then I just. So you didn't know if it was good or bad, right? Yeah. Then I I thought it was good because when he took it out, there wasn't that jackhammer. No, because it was. was No, it was bad. Because his opener and his second was, you know, but he just took that last one out and it was just like. I'm like, oh, Lord, yeah. I mean, you know, and it yep. was, I could see a huge difference. And he just like, when he hits that 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 stroke correctly, it's yeah. his, his stroke becomes shorter yep. when he hits it just right. So I mean, it came up in like half a second, and it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to squat. I can squat 1,000 pounds. You know, it never right. happened. But um, what, what's the lift that you remember the most? Probably my 181, 512. Mm-hmm. Probably the first time I benched 500. I was like 20. 20 or 21 mm-hmm. it was like a junior world record that was probably the big deal was making weight i weighed 201 24 hours before jesus Christ. and i weighed 181 oh that was bad yeah and that I, doesn't sound good my squat went horrible and my bench went good and then but that's probably the when i first did it the 700 because i never thought i'd do that that was, mm-hmm. big, that was a big deal what about yourself? Now, I'm going to go the opposite direction. Is when I was I had to hit the 500 mark, you know, and we went oh. to Circleville. And, again, one of those closed back shirts. And it, we didn't all get it all the way neck. down. And we got it choked me. And I took that down. And all of a sudden, I'm like, just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> and he took it off of me. And I think somebody come over and, like, get picked me up. I said, did I get it? <laughs> You're like, hey, fuck, no, you didn't get oh, it. You, you got it already. <laughs> you collapsed. I'm like. Okay, let's try this again. So, <laughs> that's your biggest memory? Oh hell yeah, I think that's a good one. So, I mean, <laughs> did you get it? <laughs> yeah, but I came back and ended up, ended up mm-hmm. getting it that day. Just we got the shirt, and that was the thing about the shirts, you know, the closed back shirts. Yeah. It's you think you had it on until you sat down on the bench, and then it could be off to the left yeah. or off to the right, and that's when it blew here, or blew there, or we didn't get it, yeah, and it set just it right. It didn't in the take neck. nothing to blow one of those shirts out. Oh, like man. it was. I mean, you would blow two, three of them out at a meet if you had them. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many meets did you have to like drop out of? Because people had one, they blow it yeah. out, and then you're done. Yeah. So I think that's all I had was just one shirt, praying to God that it made it. You know. Didn't you used to sell them? Didn't you used to? I made, made one for Kenny. Yeah, I remember. Kenny had a bulletproof one that he. Yeah. You went through a couple. You yep. had some big numbers with that before you grew out of it. Yep. Yeah, that was when I was a little bit lighter. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. Why? All the memories, mm-hmm. all the friendship. I mean, just like you, I haven't seen you, I haven't seen you, I haven't seen Chuck. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's like you never missed a beat. I mm-hmm. mean, I've not seen Chuck in I don't even know 20 years. Yeah. Seen him walking in here today. He's all taped up like he was the last time I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> but it was wrist straps back then. Or yeah, 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 it was wrist straps. Yeah, yeah. Now it's double tape. belt. Yeah. Right. And I, I went right over to him like nothing, just mm-hmm. busting on him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He laughed, I laughed. It was like. I mean, the memories, the friendship. I mean, me and Kenny last night were talking about how long? 36 years. 36 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. I mean, and still talk once a month at least. You know what I mean? And never miss a beat. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, I wouldn't change anything ever. Yeah. Nope. What about yourself? 
Yeah, I do it all. As a matter of fact, I just ordered a squat suit off your website, to be honest. <laughs> I don't sell squat suits anymore. <laughs> it's in my cart. If you could put a discount mm-hmm. on it, I'd appreciate that. No, I do it all. I, I, I agree 100% with everything Joe said. I think you can't the, – the, I would do it again if we was told we could replicate it. The unfortunate thing is you would never be able to replicate what we did. Yeah. Even if you brought, you know, if you could turn the, it, to me, I just feel like what we were able to be a part of was special. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it formed, at least for me, it formed you as a person and how you moved on through the rest of your life. And to Joe's point, I mean, we, we text more than we do anything, right? Cause yeah, I live yeah, in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. He's too busy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you, you're always on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the, the friendships and the camaraderie, the camaraderie that we had, it's, you know, we've came across hundreds and hundreds of people in the mm-hmm. sport, right? But there's still that nucleus of people. There's a reason us five are sitting here. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at mm-hmm. it, right? Like, so to me, it was the fundamentals. I mean, the only person we're missing, unfortunately, is Louie. Mm-hmm. Like, but that was the fundamental of of the the core nucleus of the what we learned and grew from, you know? Mm-hmm. And I remember, because obviously I was fortunate, because when I joined the gym, it was commercial. And I one of the other things, I have a, I have a 1B for the, the lift I remember, but cause I always looked up to Chuck cause Chuck, mm-hmm. when I came in, I was a kid like Joe was, you know, we're 14 years old. Like you bench like one thirty. like you couldn't even put plates on the bar yet. Right. Like, and I remember the first day I out benched Chuck cause I think at the time, maybe his best bench was like 446 and I benched 450. Mm-hmm. Like, so to me, that was like a, you kind of had arrived yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I've earned my keep and get some respect now, mm-hmm. you know? So, but I don't, I don't think I would have no problems going through the whole thing over again and redoing because to your point like a lot of people sacrificed but i think way more positive came out of it than any level of negative Mm -hmm. so i would i would do it 100 percent over and over yeah definitely myself as well but the only thing that if i wasn't able to go back and i wouldn't want to change anything other than i don't want to have more fun i mean we had we had great fun just poking on everybody all the time and that was just a blast you know but i'm talking about knowing that this sport you, you can't live off of you're not gonna sure. live off of back in our time you know there was no internet there was very crappy ass cameras there was no camera phones and so everything has to based off memory and when we sit around this table we're bringing up stuff that oh my shit i haven't even thought about that in 20 years you know yeah but it's like i to be to when you when you walk in the gym you put 100 percent into it then when you walk out you leave it right and then just then have fun in your life then when you come back to the gym you're going to put more into it when you went home and just dwelled on it. I think it just, to me, it just seemed like it ate you up inside because I yeah. know when I came back, I was stronger when I came back at a lighter body weight. Yeah. Everything I, I beat all my other numbers when I came back at a lighter body weight, like 25 pounds lighter, but I just took it as a different approach. I just, this is, I'm, you know, I'm serious when I'm in here and I'm doing what I need to do and accomplish my lifts. But when I walked out, I walked out, I'm done. I'm, I'm having fun with what I'm pursuing next, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, that would be the only thing that I would like encourage people that have fun while you're doing this and enjoy the journey. Because to me, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can be a part of like what we experienced. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I don't think that I could duplicate that in ever in life on any other atmosphere. No. It's just, we, we were all brothers, you know, and we had sisters, Amy. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And it was, it was just an experience in itself, you know, that I could always cherish myself, I think. So. But having just having more fun with what you're doing, I think uh, you you tend not to put that pressure on yourself. I've got to achieve this. I got to achieve this. You know, just knowing that you can achieve those things, just go ahead and put the effort towards it. Yeah. You know? What about you, Dave? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I one hundred is if it could be the same. You know, what I'm saying it's because yeah. it's it was a different time you know it's it's, i wouldn't want to do it now no like with cell phones and all the other kind of shit you know i I wouldn't want that we didn't have that we're fortunate we didn't we had beepers and phones and shit like that i mean we still would have had fun regardless of how we did or whatever it was you know to todd's point you know louie told me many times you know don't make this your whole life and it's i think he told it to everybody but it didn't matter yeah we're we're young you know it's all it is it is what it is so it's yeah, but under the, like you said, under the same circumstances, you know, because it, it's there's a bond that's in there that's not being distracted, mm-hmm. you know, where, yes, it was frustrating as hell, 
you know, but if it's not frustrating, then how do you know what's not frustrating? If you're not angry, how do you know if you're happy? You know what right. I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the highs are going to be higher if the lows are lower, you know, and that's one thing that it was, you know, it kind of balanced out, yep. you know, where the, if there were options, you know, to where, you know, that, that one meet in Chicago, you know, it's, it did not go well, you know, it did not go well for me fucking at all. Right. And then, you know, the, the mocking and all that other kind of, that was part of that. Then that next morning, I don't get up in time. Everybody leaves. I'm like, fuck, everybody just left me because I bombed out. You know, there's a lot of misunderstandings, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of misperceptions that are there's going on. There's a lot on. of stuff went on with Dave. Yep. Yeah. 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 And I was like, this we is fucked up. That. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, I got to figure And I would have left. You know, had there been an option, I probably would have left, but I couldn't. Right. And I'm glad that option didn't exist, right? Because if it didn't exist, I would have missed out on so much. Yeah. And that's what I kind of worry about with people trying to set up crews and stuff like that today is how much are they missing? You know, because they're not forced to actually have to deal, right. you know, with that. You know, it's so, uh, one, yes, 100% with that caveat. You know what I'm saying? You, you put that other thing in there, then no, I don't want to do it. We didn't have feelings back in. There were no feelings. You had to check them at the door. Yeah, you definitely had to check them at the door. Yeah, I know what you're saying, though, about, like, when you say options, you mean, like, going to another power yeah. gym. So kind of yeah. like what, you know, athletes leave to go, they team up at another team to become, yeah. a, you know, a what do they call them, the big three or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. like, instead of persevering through and yeah. staying, with the, yeah. staying with the teammates you got and winning with what you have. Yeah. And I'm sure for some people it's better to go someplace else. 100 percent they're going to excel someplace else yeah better for me no it wasn't you know yeah. because it's, there was enough of the blended personalities and drive and you know commonalities you know and how we approached what we were doing sure you know you can see it in people's eyes you know are, are they actually we could see it when they would come in yeah right are they actually going to make it or not you could tell mm -hmm. i could tell in five fucking minutes they ain't gonna make it. we would tell each other ain't gonna make it ain't gonna right. make it like how did we know that yeah I don't know. And probably wasn't wrong very often. Yeah, I was going to say, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm thinking I can't remember one that we said no. wasn't going to make it. That actually stayed. So mm -hmm. so whatever that was, 100% I would do that yeah. again. Because I don't even know what that is. You know, that yeah. whatever it is, is I think everybody should experience that, mm -hmm. you know, with, with something. Yeah. You know, and hopefully ex you know, have that bond with their family or whatever, you know, wh whatever else, someplace else, right. too. But at least we learned, I learned it there, you know, before that I never had that, Right. you know, not with football, any other sport anywhere else. It was that, what I don't, like I said, I can't define it cause I don't know what the fuck it is. I right. just know it was there, you know, and without that, I don't know if I'd be the person I am good, bad, indifferent, whatever the mm -hmm. fuck that even is. So, you know, hundred percent. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I yeah. think that would be anything else. No, I'm. Yeah, but I still haven't figured out how to close these fucking podcasts. So I'm just basically just saying we're done, and then we're done. <laughs> Have a good day. Be like Chuck, yeah. right? We're gotta, gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the best ever. Yeah. Yeah. He thought he had to go to the restroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, right away. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, he, he did. did. He just went home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said, "I gotta pee. I'm yeah. going to the house." Well, well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go eat anyhow. So, guys, we are out. Thank you, and we are done. Yep. Enjoy. Yep.